Hello and welcome to Go Programming Language. I am Hamid Reza Mirzaga, the instructor of this training course with more than 20 years of programming experience in C, C++, C Sharp, .NET, Java, Spring, Python, Golang, Flutter and other programming languages. In this course, I have tried to fully teach the concepts of Go programming language from basic to advanced, so every individual at any level of programming could start this course and pass it completely. Even if you have no knowledge of programming and want to get acquainted with a programming language for the first time, do not worry because this course is designed in such a way that you can learn programming concepts from basic to advanced and easily learn the course. This course begins with simple concepts such as installing Golang on the operating system, defining variables, data types and operators, and will go on with the intermediate concepts like collection, pointers, concurrency, files and directories and will be concluded with advanced concepts including database, GoRM, protocol buffer, gRPC REST API and WebSocket. Nowadays, several points have to be considered important when using a programming language, some of which will be stated. First, connection between programming language and database. For this purpose, in this course, we have completed the database training and examined its concepts from the beginning. For example, a programmer needs ER diagram knowledge to connect his program to database in order to be able to design and display his database according to his needs in applications. In this course, we will explain to you how to design a database and with what symbols its components are displayed so that any other programmer can see and implement the ER diagram. In addition, implementing a database is done in such a way that the programmer has the possibility to use their database wherever they want. In this way, the database is made as dynamic which does not depend on any specific class or struct. In this step, you first get acquainted with the database commands and do examples. In the next step, you do the Golang connection with the database and implement a project in this field. Then, in the advanced steps, you can use the GoRM framework, which is a popular framework in the Go language, to connect the Go to the database. In this tutorial, the well-known MySQL database is explained and used it in the projects, but you will also be able to use other databases. Second, Relationship between the programming language and other programming languages or different services. In other words, the programming language must be able to communicate with the outside world. Nowadays, various technologies such as protocol buffer, gRPC and RESTful are used to carry this important job. I will explain and implement these three technologies in details through different projects and will use a combination of different technologies such as database, JSON, RESTful, gRPC, protocol buffer in the project separately. For example, I will communicate with the server via RESTful and will store, edit or delete data in the database or fetch them. By learning these technologies, you will be able to implement various types of programs on the web and connect to other services or applications without having knowledge of the programming language and exchange data with them. Third, concurrency topic. As processors became more powerful and their processing capacity increased, programmers thought they could use the increase in processor cores to increase the speed and performance of their applications and to perform many of the operations of the program in parallel. One of the things that every programmer pays attention in any programming language is the topic of concurrency in order to properly manage the execution of the program in parallel. Concurrency is one of the most important things in learning Go language, which makes the program created with the language very powerful and fast. In this course, we will talk about this topic in full detail and give various examples. Fourth, WebSocket. 
WebSocket can be considered a big step in improving the performance of web applications that require real-time data exchange and even today are showing up in many multi-user online games and chat applications. WebSocket is a protocol for establishing a two-way fast connection between client and server. The purpose of introducing this protocol is to minimize the delays caused by request response communication in HTTP. Contrary to the methods introduced earlier, WebSocket is a protocol based on TCP and different from HTTP, which allows a permanent two-way communication between a client and a server only through a single TCP port. In this tutorial, I will fully explain the WebSocket and implement a chat project in different clients. I will also create a web layer in which a chat project will have the ability to ask and receive messages from the browser in addition to different clients. In the end, by finishing this training course, you will become a Golang developer and will be able to implement various programs and projects with Go language, such as networking, distributed functions, cloud service APIs, web servers, web applications, and their communications with clients, minimal frameworks for web applications, and alike in the best possible way. For all the lessons of this course, slides have been prepared aligned with pictures, tables, and diagrams which you will see during the training, so that the important and key concepts are fully explained. Also, examples have been presented for all the lessons of this training course which could be easily accessed. The best connection between us is the Q&A section. You can ask your questions there and get the right answers. Please ask any question in the related section so that I can give you the right answer as soon as possible. I hope you finish this training course successfully and enjoy programming with GoLang. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. An introduction to Golang. Go is an open source programming language. It's statically typed and produces compiled machine code binaries. Developers say that Google's Go language is the C for the 21st century when it comes to syntax. This new programming language includes tooling that allows you to safely use memory, manage objects, collect garbage, and provide aesthetic typing along with concurrency. Best features of Go programming language Compiled Garbage collected designed for multiprocessors and easy to read codes. The main goal of creating Go was to combine the best features of other programming languages such as ease of use with state-of-the-art productivity, high-level efficiency along with static typing, and advanced performance for networking and the full use of multi-core power. You might want to know why Go is rising. The reason is that Go has the same performance as C and is much easier to maintain than Java as we need no virtual machine, no warming up period, and no jar hell and so on. Let's have a look at the other Golang advantages. Spend less time and money to develop an app. You don't need a huge tech stack if you are using Go for your project. Apps created in Go language actually compile to native machine code and don't need any interpreter or virtual machine. This also means that Go apps will work faster and won't require the warming up we have just mentioned. Use Go for a range of apps. Go is a really flexible language able to solve a lot of problems. You can use it for system and network programming, big data, machine learning, audio and video editing, and more.
get more performance at a wider audience for your app. Similarly to C or C++, Go is a compiled language and doesn't require any interpretation. Correspondingly, the absence of an interpreter frees up power and gives the Go built app way more performance, which will surely be appreciated by users. Moreover, Go knows how to properly manage allocated memory. More good news is that a Go based application is less demanding in terms of system requirements. This is good for users with all their devices as they will get to enjoy your app too. And with more people using your application, you will be getting more money. Worry less about the app crashing. Go was created to use the full potential of multiple cores. Moreover, the language can properly use all the processor resources, so it's perfect for running an app in the background as a single process. This is possible thanks to Go routines, which are used instead of threads and require much less RAM due to their known system thread nature. This is why the risk of a Go app crashing due to lack of memory is lower. Easily find Go developers for your project. Go is blowing up. If you look at the 2018 developer survey by Stack Overflow, you will see that Go is one of the top of five most loved and most wanted languages. More and more professionals are diving into the world of Go. According to recent research, you can already find over 1,633,000 Go developers on the market in 2018, which is a 60% increase compared to 2017. According to the Go survey, more and more contributors to Go are coming from the Go community, which also means that there are more and more people becoming Go professionals. Developers can easily support Go apps. There is a serious advantage for those who aren't ready to hire a Go expert for support and maintenance. Go code has clear and neat syntax and requires little effort to learn. So developers you already work with can learn all they need to within just a couple of days. This will allow your developers to support your existing app. What are the advantages of using Go for your project? Why is Go language popular? Besides the cute mascot, Go brings a whole set of advantages. The language began rising almost as soon as it was released back in 2009. It quickly started drifting from the number 65 language toward the top positions around the world. Then Business Insider called Go the hottest programming language of 2016. According to the TU index, Go's rating went way up and a bit down in 2017, but in 2018 it has continuously gone up as shown in the graph below. Rank these diagrams summarize the result of our December 2018 user survey along with our commentary and insights. We are grateful to everyone who provided their feedback through the survey to help shape the future of GoLang. We asked about people's expertise and preference among programming languages Go ranked highest among respondents' first choices in both expertise and preference. Expertise Well, in this chart based on a statistic, we actually show the ranking of programming languages based on your expertise. As you can see, Go language is about 90%, Python 56%, and Java 42%. And finally, C++ 24 and 12.5% your specialty. Go language is still top of the expertise diagram. Preferences 
and the other diagram based on a statistic that show that the preferences of programming languages as you can see go language is about 93% python 53% and Rust 90% and finally C++ 18 and PHP 11% Go is clearly attracting many programmers from dynamic languages What projects can you use Go for? Go will definitely do the trick if you are planning to develop the underlying services for your application more than that, Go is good for scalable high-performance apps. We list some apps and services that are enjoying the benefits of Go. Cloud Services As the creator of Go, Google is using the language to provide cloud infrastructure. It offers top performance and scalability to the Google Cloud platform. But there are even more well-known cloud businesses out there are using Go for the same reasons such as Dropbox, Terraform, Kubernetes, and Docker. Media platforms YouTube, SoundCloud, and Netflix choose Go to fight with high loads on their sites. SoundCloud uses this language for deploying some internal services within their complex projects. On-demand services the taxi giant Uber was looking to improve map processing aspects as people loaded geofence lookups, sending literally thousands of queries per second. Go helped Uber significantly reduce the timing of providing services to users, which was much appreciated by users. Aside from the services and products, Go provides good tooling for mobile app development. This is why we will soon see even more examples of Go in mobile applications and propel in some other industries as well. Although Go is still a relatively young programming language, it has gained popularity among real business. Monsters like Google, Netflix, Uber and others who use Go to scale their products and achieve high performance. Go is quickly changing for the best, providing more and more tools for mobile and web development and remarkably decreasing the time and cost of app development and software. News outlets Back in 2012, BBC started using Go language for backend development and some of the elements of their internal analytics services. Go Lang Designers Go was produced in 2007 and launched in 2009 and introduced to the public. Robert Grishmer, Rob Pike, and Ken Thompson are Google's top three Go programming language designers. The three started with the goal of creating a language similar to the C programming language that is as powerful as it is, which eventually launched into the modern programming language object-oriented pointers, methods, and etc. And as a result, we're able to launch a high-performance, fast, and efficient language to market and introduce to the public. Comparison between five languages by according benchmarks. Well, a comparison has been made between the top five programming languages by benchmarks based on hardware and software among which the Go language is still at the top of the other languages in the table and occupies about 80%. C-sharp also 79%, Node.js 74%, Java 17 and Python 68%. And in hardware and software, items such as memory, CPU, serialization, error handling and etc. have been compared in a score. The best ideas for Golang development According to statistics conducted by Golang programmers, the percentage of programming environments used for this language is statistically expressed. In this chart, we can see the usage of each of the integrated development environments. So we see Golang top of the others by 35% and VS Code about 22% and see the others. 
And in the end, I hope you can communicate well with the Go language and master this powerful and efficient language and enjoy the world of the Go programming language. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about installing Golang and preparing VS Code ID in Windows. Git tool. Git is a version control system. We need it for two reasons. First, many components of Golang are distributed via Git and second, the Windows installer includes a terminal that makes it behave more like Unix operating systems. So download and install MySysGit from mysysgit.github.io. When the installer asks, make sure to select Use Git from the Windows command prompt. The terminal. Windows comes with a terminal called cmd.exe. You can start it by clicking on the window button and typing cmd and then selecting it. Terminals are a text-driven interface to your computer. You can enter commands by typing the command and hinting enter. Your computer will then execute the command and display any results. Go ahead and close it as we will be using a different terminal that comes bundled with my sys git. Click start all programs git and select git bash. Terminals also allow you to manipulate files and folders on your computer. Your terminal starts in a working directory where you can list the folder contents with ls, change directories using cd, make directories using mka, dir, and remove files using rm. Golang install. Go is a compiled programming language, so we need to install the Go toolset. Download and run the installer from golang.org slash dl. Choose windows-amd64.msi for 64-bit or windows-386.msi for 32-bit version. You probably want the 64-bit version. Confirm that it worked by opening a new terminal and typing Go version. Now you should see the Go version you installed. Environment variables. Now set the environment variables. Right click on My PC and select Properties. Choose the Advanced System Settings from the left side and click on Environment variables as shown in the below screenshots. Click on Path from the System Variables and then click Edit. So click New and then add the path with bin directory where you have pasted the Go folder. Here we are editing the path C column backslash Go backslash bin and click OK as shown in the below screen shots. Now Create a new user variable which tells Go command where Golang libraries are present. For that, click on new and user variables as shown in the below screen shot. Now fill the variable names as Go root and variable value is the path of your Golang folder. So here variable value is C column backslash go after filling click ok after that click ok on environment variables and your setup is completed now let's check the golang version by using the command go version on command prompt and see the golang version 
So after completing the installation process, any ID or text editor can be used to write Golang codes and run them on the ID or the command prompt with the use of command. In this case, we want to install VS Code and write our codes on it. Install Visual Studio Code and Extension Download and install VS Code from the following link code.visualstudio.com slash download After the installation, launch VS Code Open the extensions marketplace by the control plus shift plus x short key and then search go extension and install it. After it, open the command palette by the control plus shift plus p short key and run the go install update tools command. And select all the go extensions listed here and install them. Start coding. Create a file like name hello.go in VS Code IDE by the following. By default, auto completion and formatting for code saving are enabled. That's great. After created the file, save it and go to the terminal and execute the following command go run hello.go and you can see the hello world message now it's ready to writing our codes in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In this session, we want to talk about install the Go programming language practically inside the Windows operating system. First, install the Git tool in the Windows environment. So go to the mcsgit.github.io URL. mcsgit.github.io and now we enter the git software download page press the download button and wait until the download starts press the start download okay download completed now go to install the application right click and run as administrator The first page of the application was opened. This page provides us GNU general public license information. Press next and continue. In this page, we should select the application destination location. By default here, destination location is C program files git folder. You can change this destination, but here we don't change it. To continue, click next. In this page, ask us what components you want to install. We can accept the default settings and we can select on the desktop option as additional icons. Press next and continue. In this page, we select the start menu folder. By default, it is git. Select it and click next to continue. In this page, ask us what text editor you want to select by default for git. Depending on the type of editor installed on the operating system, the desired editor can be selected. Here, the Notepad++ editor is installed on my system, so I select it as the default text editor for Git. So I choose Notepad++ as default editor used by Git tool. To continue, press Next. Here, we want to adjust the name of the initial branch in new repositories. As default, we select let git decide. To continue, press next. In this case, we want to define your path environment. By default, 
we select git from the command line and also from 3d party software to continue press next here we want to select which ssl or tls library would you like git to use for https connections by default we select use the open ssl library press next to continue in this case we want to configure how should git treat line endings in text files by default we select checkout windows dash style commit unix dash style lines endings to continue press next here we want to know which terminal emulator do you want to use with your git batch by default we use min tty press next in this case, we want to choose the default behavior of git pool. As default, we select fast forward or merge. Press next and continue. Here, we want to know which credential helper should be configured. By default, we select git credential manager core. To continue, press next. In this case, we want to configure extra options and to know which features would you like to enable. Here we select enable file system catching. To continue press next. Here we want to configure experimental options and to know which bleeding edge features which we like to enable. In this case we don't select anything and press install. The program is being installed. We are waiting for the installation of the program to be completed. The software installation process is complete. Now let's go to desktop and see the git software shortcut. So first run the git tool. To test the software we want to see the list of files and folders in the current path. To do this we use the ls command. Now we see that the software is installed correctly and this command shows the list of all files and folders for us. In the first step, we manage to install the git completely. In the following, we check the CMD or command prompt software in Windows. So click on start button, type CMD and select command prompt. Here, as in the previous step, we can see the files and folders in the current path to check the software. In the Windows terminal, the dir command is used to view the files and folders. So we type dir and press enter. Now we see that everything is correct and all the files and folders in the current path are displayed to us correctly. Now it's time to move on to installing Go language. So go to the Go lang dot org slash dl we entered the golang software download page based on the desired operating system select the installation file and download it so we select the windows installation file press the download button wait until the download starts now start download the program is being downloaded. Download completed. So go to the run the application. Right click on the program and install. To continue click next. This page provides us with software license information. So we select I accept the terms in the license agreement. To continue, select next. Here, you have to choose the path to install the Go language. We choose the default path as C backslash Go and continue. Here, click on install button. Wait a few seconds for the Go language installation to finish. Installation of the program is completed and we click on the finish button. Now we were able to install the Golang programming language. In this time, you need to define a path as a workspace for the Golang, which we usually selected by default C 
back slash user back slash username and back slash go and create three folders bean src pkg in this path so go to my computer select drive c go to users my username here is hamid reza go to hamid reza create a folder named go now in go folder we create these three folders first create a folder named bean second create a folder named pkg and third create a folder named src okay here we want to examine a challenge open the cmd program and check the version of the installed go programming language with the go version command so click on a start button type cmd and select command prompt in this case we use from go version command so we type go version here we see that the installed version of golang is displayed but if the go version command does not return any output it means that we should set the environment variables to do this right click on the my computer select properties select advanced system setting from the right side select the environment variables in this section go to the system variables unit and select path and press edit and press the new button then set the c column backslash go backslash bin in this case we have already set this value here now to create a go path variable at the top of the page in the user variables section press the new button in the variable named field type the word go path in upper case and in the variable value field type percent user profile by upper case percent backslash go then press ok by setting environment variables in the system inside the terminal we will have access to the go commands in any path so go to the terminal click on the start button write cmd select command prompt first change a directory and again run go version command now we can see version of the installed go program with the go version command in another directory okay it's time to download and install vs code program for this go to the code.visualstudio.com url so type code.visualstudio.com slash download based on the desired operating system select the installation file and download it my system is windows 64-bit version so select system installer 64-bit press the download button wait until the download starts click on the start download button the program is being downloaded okay download completed so go to install the application right click on the program and select run as administrator this page provides us with software license agreement so select i accept the agreement radio button and click next to continue on this page you have to choose the path to install the vs code setup will install visual studio code into the c program files microsoft vs code folder so we choose it as default and continue here we select the start menu folder 
Setup will create a program shortcut in the following start menu folder. To continue, press next. In this case, we want to select which additional task should be performed. So we select add to path and create a desktop icon as additional icons. To continue, click next and click install button. The program is being installed. Now press finish button. The software installation process is complete. Now let's go to the desktop and run the VS Code program. Now it's time to configure the VS Code. In this time we want to install Go extension. So first press Ctrl plus Shift plus X short key and select Go extension. Install it. Now installation completed. So close software and reopen it again. Now it's time to install the required tools for VS Code program. So press Ctrl plus Shift plus P short key and select Go Install Update Tools and select all the checkboxes for installing all required tools. We are waiting for the installation of the required tools to be completed. Okay. All tools successfully installed. Now close VS Code program and open it again. Go to the Project Explorer, open Workspace, My workspace is C, Users, Hamid Reza, Go, and select SRC folder. In this case, we want to create a sample in VS Code. So we define a package like hello and create a file like main.go inside it and set a package for example, package main. In this session, we want to write a few lines of code and just we want to test the program. And we will explain these codes in the future. So we write func main and set a message for this function fmt.println. Welcome to go programming language now save the project go to terminal and execute the program first clear a screen go to the project folder and execute the program by the command go run main.go now we can see the output welcome to go programming language Everything is ready for us to be able to write our codes. We have reached the end of this session. I hope you take full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about installing Golang and preparing VS Code IDE in Windows operating system. And in this session, we want to talk about the installing Golang and preparing VS Code IDE in Linux operating system. How to install Golang in Linux system? First, go to golang.org slash dl and download the latest version of Golang in an archive file using wget command as follows. Now, select Golang version based by operating system version. 
if our OS is 64 bit, select Golang 64 bit version. And if it is 32 bit, we select Golang version 32 bit. Next, check the integrity of the tarball by verifying the SHA 256 checksum of the archive file using the SASHEM command as below. Where the flag dash A is used to specify the algorithm to be used. SASHEM dash A 256 golang.tar.gz to show that the contents of the downloaded archive file are the exact copy provided on the Golang website, the 256-bit hash value generated from the command above as seen in the output should be the same as the provided along with the download link. If that is the case, proceed to the next step, otherwise download the new tarball and run the check again. Then extract the tar archive file into slash user slash local directory using the command below. sudo tar dash c uppercase slash user slash local dash xvzf golang dot tar dot gz where dash c uppercase specifies the destination directory. First set up your go workspace by creating a directory home go under projects which is the root of your workspace. The workspace is made of three directories namely bin which will contain go executable binaries, src which will store your source file and pkg which will store package objects. Therefore, create three above directories as follows mkdir p home slash go under project slash open and close curly braces and between in put bin, comma, src and comma pkg. mkdir means make directory. And second, cd home slash go under projects cd means change directory and third ls means list files and directories now it's time to execute go like the rest of linux programs without specifying its absolute path its installation directory must be stored as one of the value of path environment variables now add slash user slash local slash go slash bean to the path environment variable by inserting the line below in your slash etc slash profile file for a system wide installation or home slash dot profile or home slash dot bash underline profile to user a specific installation. Using your preferred editor, Open the appropriated user profile file as per your distribution and add the line below so save the file and exit it. Export path equals path column slash user slash local slash go slash bean. And then set the values of go path and go bean go environment variables in your user profile file to point to your workspace directory. Export go path equals home slash go underline projects and export go bean equals go path slash bean. If you install Golang in a custom directory other than the default path means slash user slash local, you must specify that directory as the value of the go root variable. For example, if you have installed golang in the home directory, add the lines below to your home slash dot profile or home slash dot bash underline profile file. Export go root equals home slash go and export path equals path column go root slash bin. 
The final step under this session is to affect the changes made to the user profile in the current batch session. So, write source home dot batch underline profile and execute or source home slash dot profile. Verifying Golang installation. Run the comments below to view your Go version and environment. Go version to see the version of Golang and Go env to see the Golang environment. Type the following command to display usage information for the Go tool, which manages Go source code. Go help. To test if your Go installation is working correctly, write a small Go Hello World program, save the file in home go underline project slash src slash hello directory. All your Golang source files must be end with the .go extension. Begin by creating the hello project directory under home go underline project slash src so we write mkdir dash p home go underline projects slash src slash hello then use your favorite editor to create the hello.go file in the hello directory in this example we used from vim so write vi home slash go underline projects slash src slash hello slash hello dot go now go to create a sample add the lines below in the file save it and exit it now compile the program above as using go install and run it so for compile we use go install command and for run the program we use go run if you see the message hello welcome to the golang programming in linux so your installation is working correctly install visual studio code on debian and ubuntu the most preferred method of installing Visual Studio Code on Debian-based systems is by enabling the VS Code repository and installing the Visual Studio Code package using the apt package manager. So we use the command sudo apt update. Once updated, proceed and install dependencies required by executing the command sudo apt install software dash properties dash common apt dash transport dash https next using the wget command download the repository and import microsoft's gpg key as shown once you have enabled the repository Update the system and install Visual Studio Code by running the command sudo apt update and sudo apt install code. Due to its size, the installation takes approximately 5 minutes. Once installed, use the application manager to search Visual Studio Code and launch it as shown. Install VS Code extensions. After the installation, launch VS Code. Then open the extensions marketplace by the Ctrl plus Shift plus X short key and search Go and install it. Now it's time to install update tools. For do this, open the command palette by the Ctrl plus Shift plus P short key and run the go column install update tools command. After execute it, you can see go extensions listed here. Select all and install them. 
In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about install the Go Programming Language practically inside the Linux operating system. First, install the Golang. Golang.org slash dl We entered the Golang software download page. Based on the desired operating system, select the installation file and download it. Because my system is Linux, we select the Linux installation file and go to Linux tab and copy the name of last version of Golang. Now open a new terminal and download it by wget command. So we write wget dash c https column slash slash go lang dot org slash dl slash and paste the name of the last version of Golang that we have copied it. Now download is starting. The download completed. In this time, check the integrity of the tar ball by verifying the SHA-256 checksum of the archive file using the SASHEM command. So we write SASHEM A-256 and paste name of the Golang last version that we have copied it. Now we can get the SHA-256 checksum hashes of the file and its correct. Now extract the archive file into slash user slash local directory. So in terminal, go to destination of the archive file, download it and extract golang file into slash user slash local by this command. sudo tar dash c slash user slash local dash xvzf name of the last version of golang by the type tar dot gz for the check we will go to the slash user slash local directory and now we see the Golang installed correctly. Now configuring Golang environment in Linux. First, set up your Go workspace by creating a directory at home. For the example named Go underline projects, which is the root of your workspace. The workspace is made of three directories, namely bin, which will contain Go executable binaries, SRC will be a store your source files and PKG which will store package objects. Now let's go to write some commands for create workspace. sudo mkdir dash p home slash go underline projects open curly braces bean comma src comma pkg and close curly braces now go to home and check the go underline project workspace all the directories created and see all things is okay now it's time to execute go 
Like the rest of Linux programs, without specifying its absolute path, its installation directory must be stored as one of the values of path environment variable. So add slash user slash local slash go slash bean to the path environment variable by inserting in your slash etc slash profile file for system while installation or home slash dot profile or home slash dot bash underline profile for user specific installation. Now we set it for user specific installation. So open the user profile file means slash dot profile and add this line. Export path equals path column slash user slash local slash go slash bin. Then set the values of go path and go bin go environment variables in your user profile file to point your workspace directory. So add these lines in profile. Export go path equals home slash go underline projects export go bin equals go path slash bin The final step under this section is to affect the changes made to the user profile in the current batch session by source command. So we write source home slash dot profile and execute this comment. For verifying golang installation, run the go version and go and commence to view your go version and environment. So we write go version. Now we can see the Go version and Go env. Now we can see the environment of Go. So the installation is correctly and everything all right. Now it's time to install Visual Studio Code on Debian or Ubuntu. The most preferred method of installing Visual Studio Code on Debian based systems is by enabling the VS Code repository and installing the Visual Studio Code package using the apt package manager. So first we write sudo apt update. The update is starting and wait until update complete. Okay, the update has completed. Once updated, proceed and install dependencies required by executing. So we write sudo apt install software dash properties dash common space apt dash transport dash https and execute. The program is being installed. Press Y and continue. Wait until installation complete. Okay, installation complete. Next, using the wget command, download the repository and import Microsoft's GPG keys for convenience. I have already saved them in a file, copy and put them in the terminal. So go to our file, open it, copy these lines and move them to the terminal and execute them one by one.
Once you have enabled the repository, update the system and install Visual Studio Code by running the command sudo apt update. The update is starting. Wait until update complete. And sudo apt install code. Due to its size, the installation takes approximately 5 minutes. Once installed, use the application manager to search Visual Studio Code and launch it. Okay, the software installation process is complete. Now it's time to go to configure the VS Code. So open the VS Code. First open the extensions marketplace by Ctrl plus Shift plus X short key and search Go extension and install it. Okay, it's installed. And now open comment palette by Ctrl plus Shift plus P short key and select Go column install slash update tools and select all the checkboxes for installing all requires tools now we are waiting for the installation of the required tools to be completed okay download completed now for test, create a simple project. So go to Explorer project and go to workspace. And create a folder like hello. And inside it, create a file like main.go. And write some codes. In future, we will talk about these codes. Here, just we want to test. So, we write package main func main and write a message by the command fmt.println and set a message, for example, welcome to go programming language. Save the project, go to terminal and run the project. First go to hello folder, cd hello and run the project by the command go run main.go. Now we can see the message welcome to go programming language. All things are okay and you are ready to write your codes. Okay, we have reached the end of this session. I hope that you have taken full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about variable concept. Variables. Variables are like boxes, each of which has a specific type and you can store values to the boxes based on its type. We might be limited by our programming language, but as shown above, integer, float, boolean, and string are certainly options to be stored in a variable. Storing data. A variable is a placeholder of the information which can be changed at runtime. And variables allow to retrieve and manipulate the stored information. In any programming language, a variable is used to store the data or the value that is used in the program for execution. The value that is stored in the variable can be used or modified in the later part of execution. For example, a int equals 100 
Here, A is the variable that stores the value of 100. The data type defined is integer. Hence, A can store only the integer values. Go variables. In Go language, a variable holds data temporarily to work with it. A GoLang variable declaration needs four things. First, a statement that declaring a GoLang variable. Second, a name for the variable. Third, the type of data it can hold. And fourth, an initial value for it. Fortunately, some of the parts are optional. But that also means there is more than one way of defining a variable in GoLang. Go variables. In Go language, variables are created in two different. First, using var keyword. In Go language, variables are created using var keyword of a particular type connected with name and provides its initial value. Now you can see the syntax var variable name type equals to value. Second, using short variable declaration, the local variables which are declared and initialized in the functions are declared by using short variable declaration. Now you can see the syntax variable name column equals value. Now we want to know some important things about Golang variables. First, Golang is a statically typed language. This means that when Golang variables are declared, they either explicitly or implicitly assigned a type even before your program runs. Second, GoLang requires that every variable you declare inside main function get used somewhere in your program. Third, you can assign new value to an existing variable, but the value needs to be of same type. Fourth, a variable declared within brace brackets may be accessed anywhere within the block. The opening curly braces introduces a new scope that ends with a closing brace. Inner blocks can access variables within outer blocks, but outer block cannot access variables within inner blocks. Rules for naming variables. First, variable names must begin with a letter or an underscore, and names may contain the letters a till Z lowercase or A till Z uppercase or digits 0 till 9 as well as the character underscore. In this example, we have defined three variables. Kim is the first variable whose first letter is capital. Kim's second variable in which all letters are lowercase characters and underscore Kim 123, the third variable, whose first letter begins with an underscore and all three variables are named correctly. Second, a variable name should not start with a digit. In this example, we define a variable called 123 Kim, and since the variable starts with a number, this variable is not named correctly and is illegal. Third, the name of the variable is case sensitive. In this example, we have defined three variables in three ways. Kim with lowercase letters and Kim where all the letters are uppercase and Kim whose first letter is uppercase character and the naming of all three variables is done correctly. Fourth, keyword is not allowed to use as a variable name. The Go programming language has a series of keywords that cannot be used to define variables, such as var, for, struct, and switch. Fifth, 
there is no limit on the length of the name of the variable but it is advisable to use an optimum length of 4 till 15 letters only like first name last name sixth the convention in go is to use missed caps rather than underscores to write multi-word names like the word birth date where the second part of the word means date begins with a capital letter. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to continue the variable concept. Go variables declaration and initialization. In the last session, we said that in Go language, variables are created in two different ways. The first method using var keyword and the second method through short variable declaration. In this session, we want to examine the types of variables in the VS Code environments. First, we will start with the var keyword method and examine the different modes of creating a variable. So, open the VS Code and create a sample project. Go to Project Explorer, create a folder, name for example variables, and create a file inside it like main.go. First define the package name, package main, and define a main function, func main. In Go programming language, when a project is executed, the compiler first reads and executes the main function. And main function is the starting point of a project in Go language. Now it's time to define the types of variables. First, we examine the different cases of variable definition by var keyword. First case, in the var syntax, Either type or equals expression can remove, but not both can remove in the declaration of a variable. So first consider the case where the type is deleted. If the type is removed, then the type of the variable is determined by the value initialized in the expression. Now let's do an example for this case. First, define three variables that declared and initialized without the explicit type. For example, var variable 1 equals 100. This variable doesn't have any type, but initialized by a 100 value. A 100 value type is integer, so the type of variable 1 should be integer. Go to the next line and define another variable, for example, var variable 2 equals. We initialize this variable by a string value. Go programming language. And go to the next line, var variable. 3 equals 750.345 Variable 3, like another variable, doesn't have any type and we initialize it by 750.345 so this variable gets fellow type to itself For display and print variables we use the printf function from the fmt package. The printf method consists of two parts. The first part, which specifies the text and data type, 
and the second part which is separated from the first part by a comma we enter the name of the variable used now display the variable so do the following fmt dot print f for the first part we write the value of variable one is here we use from the conversion character or format string the printf family of function uses percent character as a placeholder when a percent is encountered printf reads the characters following the person to determine what to do for example person s take the next argument and print it as a string or person d take the next argument and print it as an integer value so for the variable one we set percent d because the type of that variable is integer and go to the next part and set name of that variable variable one go to the next line and print type of the variable so we write fmt dot print f the type of variable one equals or column in this case we set person t uppercase for format string or conversion character for display a type of a variable so we write percent t uppercase and set a variable variable one so we could display value and type of the variable by the percent d and percent t we use from percent d character because the variable one has an integer value so go to the next line and display values and types of variable two and variable three so write again fmt dot printf the value of variable two column variable 2 has a string value so we set percent s lowercase as format string for this variable and go to the next part and set variable 2 go to the next line and display type of this variable fmt dot print f the type of variable two column we use from person t uppercase as format string for this variable so set variable two and go to the next line and display value and type of variable three so we write fmt dot printf in first section we write the value of variable three column because we initialize the variable three by a float value so we use from percent f lowercase as conversion character or a string format percent f and in the next session we set name of the variable variable three and go to the next line and display type of this variable fmt dot printf the type of variable three column percent t uppercase because we want to display the type of a variable we use from percent t uppercase and go to the next session and set name of variable variable three okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program first go to a terminal 
go to a project folder cd variables clear screen and execute program by the command go run dot mac slash main dot go now we can see the output but the values are printed consecutively on the lines to be able to print each value on a separate line we use backslash n as a control character so that we can print each value on a new line so we put backslash n in the end of the first section of each display so we said backslash n Save the project and go to terminal and execute again. Now we can see each value display in separate line. For example, the value of variable 1 is 100 and type of it is integer. Value of variable 2 is go programming language and type of it is a string and value of variable 3 is 750.345 and type of it is float64 in future chapters we will talk in detail about the data types and the various printing methods of the fnt package in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye <laughs>
Now reformat the code, save the project and execute the program. So go to terminal and run the command go run.backslashmay.go. Now we can see the output. The value of variable 1 is 0, the value of variable 2 is nil, and the value of variable 3 is 0. 0. So we could define variables without expression and see the default value for them. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Go programming language course. In the previous session, we could define variables without expression. And in this session, we want to do another case. If you use type, then you are allowed to declare multiple variables of the same type in the single declaration. For this case, we define three variables in line. So we write var define variable name like variable one comma define another variable name variable two comma and variable three and these three variables has the same type like integer and now we initialize them one by one for variable one for example we said two comma for second variable or variable 2, we set, for example, 454 and uh, for variable 3, we set, for example, 67. We were able to define multiple variables of the same type are declared and initialized in the single line. Now go to the next line and display the values of these variables. fmt.printf the value of variable one column percent d backslash n and set variable one we set percent d as format string because all the variable has the integer type so copy these lines and paste it for another variables And now change the variable names and messages. Variable two, variable two, and variable three, and set variable three. Now reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. First, go to a terminal, go to a project folder, cd variables. Clear screen and execute program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go. Now we can see the output. The value of variable one is two. The value of variable two is four hundred and fifty four, and the value of variable three is sixty seven. So in this case, we could define multiple variables of the same type in the single declaration. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define multiple variables of the same type in the single declaration. And in this session, we want to do another case. If you remove type, then you are allowed to declare multiple variables of a different type in the single declaration. The type of variable is determined by the initialized values. Let's go to do an example. First, define multiple variables of different types. So we write var 
variable one comma variable two comma variable three and don't define any time for each variable equals and initialize them for example for the variable one we set two and for second variable we set a string value for example go blank and for the third variable we set a float value for example 67.56 now we were able to define multiple variables of different types are declared and initialized in the single line so let's go to display the above variables by the printf function so we write fmt dot printf the value of variable one column set percent d as format testing for the variable one because the value of it is int so the type of this variable should be integer and go to the next session and set name of variable and go to the next line and set a type of the variable so we write fmt dot printf the type of variable one column person t uppercase for display the type of the variable we used from t as format string and set name of variable variable one so copy these two lines and go to a new line paste here for display and other variables for example for variable two because it initialized by the a string value so we change the format a string to the percent s and change name of variable to variable two variable 2 and for variable 3 because we initialize this variable by the float value we change it to percent %f format a string and we change name of variable to variable 3 okay to be able to display each value in the output on a new line, we use backslash n at the end of the command. So we add backslash n end of each command. reformat the code and save the project and execute the program now go to terminal first go to project folder cd variables kill your screen and run the project by the command go run dot backslash main dot go okay now we can see the output the value of variable one is two and type of this variable is int the value of second variable is go lang and type of it is a string and the value of variable 3 is 67.56 and the type of this variable is float so we could define multiple variables of a different type in the single declaration in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define multiple variables of a different type in the single declaration. And in this session, we want to do another case. If you declared a variable without assigning it a value, Golang 
will automatically bind a default value to the variable. Let's do an example. First, define some variable without initialize them. For example, var num1 by the time float 32 and var num2 by the type int 16 and var first name by the type a string and var for example married by the type bool okay we could define four variables without initialize them in this case the compiler considers the default value for the defined variable and base of its type assign the default value to that variable now we want to display the value of these variables so we write fmt.println num1 and fp num2 fp first name and fp mart okay we format the code save the project and execute the program first go to the project folder see the variables clear the screen and execute the program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output the default value for the num1 by the type float32 is 0 the default value for the num2 by the type integer is 0 the default value for the first name by the type a string is nil and the default value for the married by the type boolean is false. Now we could see that Golang initialized the variables by the default values. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define variable without assigning it and Golang automatically will bind the default value to the variable. And in this session, we want to do another case. Variables declaration can be grouped together into blocks for greater readability and code quality. So let's do an example. To do this, first use the var keyword and then create open and close parentheses and define its variable between parentheses. So we write var keyword, open and close parentheses and define variables between them. For example, first name initialize by the value key go to the next line define another variable like num1 equals 300 and num2 equals 20.65 and define another variable like married equals true in this case we define four variables by the type a string integer float and boolean now go out of the block and display these variables so we write ft first name go to the next line ft num1 and display num2 and display boolean variable 
merit okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program so go to terminal first clear screen go to project folder cd variables and run the program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output in this case we could define variable declaration can be grouped together into blocks in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous sessions, we defined a variable in the Go language through the var keyword and examined its different cases. And in this session, we will define the variable through the short variable declaration. The local variables which are declared and initialized in the functions are declared by using shorthand variable declaration. In this syntax, the type of the variable is determined by the type of the expression. Now let's do an example for this case. First, we define the short variable declaration. For example, var1 colon equals 100. In this case, set the type of variable based on the expression. This means that the numeric value 100 is stored inside var1 and its type is integer. So go to the next line and define another variable. For example, var2 colon equals and set a string type go programming. This means that the text value go programming is stored inside var2 and its type is a string. And go to the next line and define another variable like var3 column equals 135.94. This means that the float value 135.94 is stored inside var3 and its type is float. For displayed and print variables, we use the printf function from the fmt package. So we write ff the value of var 1 columns percent d as format string because the type of the variable 1 is integer and set var 1 and go to the next line and display type of the variable so we write ff the type of var 1 columns percent t uppercase because we want to display the type of the variables so we use from t uppercase as format string and set var1 okay copy these two lines and go to the new line and paste here for display the another variables so we change name and value of this variable var2 because the type of his string, we change the format string into a percent s large case. And var2 and for the variable 3 we use from percent f because the type of the var3 is float. So we use from percent f as conversion character or format a string and we change the name of the variable into var3 okay to be able to display each value in the output on the new line we use backslash n and end of the command so we put backslash n end of each command
Okay, reformat the code, save the project and execute the program. Now go to terminal. First go to project folder, see the variables. Kill your screen and run the project by the command go run dot backslash main dot go. Now we can see the output. The value of var1 is 100 and type of it is int. Value of var2 is go programming and type of it is a string. And value of var3 is 135.94 and type of it is float64. Okay, most of the local variables are declared and initialized by using shorthand variable declaration due to their brevity and flexibility. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we could define the variable through the short variable declaration. And in this session, we want to do another cases. By using short variable declaration, you are allowed to declare multiple variables of the same type in the single declaration. Now let's do an example. First, define three variables in line. So we write var1 comma var2 comma var3 column equals and initialize this variable one by one for example for var1 we initialize a hundred for var2 we set 200 and for var3 we initialize it by 300 we declared and initialized in the single line multiple variables of same types by using short variable declaration. Now display the value and type of each variable. So go to the next line and write ff, set a message, the value of var1 columns percent d because the types of the all variable is integer, so we set from person %d as string format for all variables. And var1 and go to the next line and display type of this variable. ff the type of var1 column person %t uppercase and set var1 copy these two lines go to a new line paste here and display another variables var2 var2 type is integer var2 and for variable 3 so we use from person d as format a string var3 var3 and var3 okay to be able to display each value in the output on a new line we use from backslash n at the end of the message of the comment so we put backslash n Backslash n Reformat the code, save the project and execute the program Go to terminal First go to project folder See the variables Kill your screen And run the program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output. The value of var1 is 100, the value of var2 is 200, and the value of var3 is 300. And the types of all variable is int. 
Now we want to define another case. Using short variable declaration, you are allowed to declare multiple variables of different types in the single declaration. The type of these variables are determined by the expression. Now let's do an example. So first clear the last code. Define three variables, for example, var1, comma, var2, comma, var3, column equals, and initialize these variables by different types of value. For example, for var1, we initialize it by integer value. So we set a hundred for it. And for var2, we initialize it by a string value. For example, go programming and for third variable we initialize it by a float value for example 86.54 we declared and initialized in the single line multiple variables of different types by using short variable declaration now display the value and type of the variables so we write ff the value of var1 column percent because the type of variable 1 is integer so we use from percent d as format testing and set var1 go to the next line and display type of variable ff the type of var1 column Person T uppercase and set var1. Now copy these two lines and go to a new line, paste here and define another variable for it. For example, var2, we change format string to percent %s because the type of variable 2 is a string. And for variable 3, we change var3 and we change conversion character to percent %f because the type of var3 is float. var3, var3, var3. And set a backslash n in the end of message of each line. Backslash n. Backslash n. Okay, now reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Go to terminal, go run.backslashmain.go. Now we can see the output. The value of var1 is 100 and type of it is int. The value of var2 is go programming and type of it is a string. And the value of var3 is 86.54 and type of it is float64. So we could define multiple variables of different types in the single declaration by using shorthand variable declaration. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about shorthand variable declaration. And in this session, we want to talk about the other variable concept. A scope of Golang variables. The scope of a variable can be defined as a part of the program where a particular variable is accessible. A variable can be defined in a class, method, loop, or etc. Like C or C++, in Golang, all identifiers are lexically scoped. 
scope of a variable can be determined at compile time. Or you can say a variable can only be called from within the block of code in which it is defined. Golang scope rules of variables can be divided in two, two categories, which depend on where the variables are declared. First, local variables declared inside the block or a function. And second, global variables declared outside a block or a function. Golang uses lexical scoping based on code blocks to determine the scope of variables. Inner block can access its outer block defined variables, but outer block cannot access inner block defined variables. Now it's time to go to VS Code and create a sample project. Local variables features. First, variables that are declared inside a function or a block are termed as local variables. These are not accessible outside the function or block. Second, these variables can also be declared inside the for, while statement, or inside the function. Third, these variables can be accessed by the nested code blocks inside the function. Fourth, these variables are also termed as the block variables. Fifth, there will be a compile time error if these variables are declared twice with the same name in the same scope. Sixth, these variables doesn't exist after the function's execution is over. Seventh, the variable which is declared outside the loop is also accessible within the nested loops. It means a global variable will be accessible to the methods and all loops. The local variable will be accessible to loop and function inside that function. And eighth, a variable which is declared inside the loop body will not be visible to the outside of loop body. Now let's do an example. First define two variables like var variable one comma variable two by the type int equals a hundred and two hundred ff the value of variable one column person d variable one and go to the next line ff the value of variable Two percent d variable two and set a backslash n and backslash n. Now reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Go to terminal, go to project folder, see the variables. Clear a screen and go round dot backslash main dot go. Now we can see the output. The value of variable one is a hundred and the value of variable two is two hundred. Now we could define local variables in the main function. The scope of access to these variables starts with open curly braces and ends with closing. Now we want to define about global variables features. First, the variables which are defined outside of a function or a block is termed as global variables. Second, these are available throughout the lifetime of a program. Third, these are declared at the top of the program outside all of the functions or blocks. And fourth, these can be accessed from any portion of the program. Now let's go to do an example about global variables. So first clear the last code.
Okay, after the package name and in top of all function, first we defined a variable named global variable. So we write var global variable by the type int and initialize it by a hundred value. This is a global variable declaration. Now go to the main function and define a local variable. For example, var local variable by the type int and initialize it by 200. Display the value of global variable. ff the value of global variable column percent d global variable and go to the next line and now display the value of local variable ff the value of local variable column percent d and set local variable reformat the code and save the project in order to better understand the concept of local variables and global variables we define another function like display so we defined a function like display func display Here, we can use from global variable, but don't use of local variables of other functions and we do not access them. For the example, come here and display the value of global variable. So we write ff the value of global variable column percent d backslash n and set variable global now calling display function in main function display reformat the code save the project and execute the program first clear screen and run the project by the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output. First, we could display the local and global variable values in the main function and then calling the global variable in display function and calling display function in main function and execute it. And we could display all the local and global variables value. In this case, we want to define a challenge. So first ask a question. What will happen there exists a local variable with the same name as that of the global variable inside the function? The answer is simple, i.e. compiler will give preference to the local variable. Usually, when two variables with the same name is defined, then the compiler produces a compile time error. But if the variables are defined in different scopes, then the compiler allows it. Whenever there is a local variable defined with the same name as that of a global variable, then the compiler will give precedence to the local variable. We define another program and you can clearly see the output. So clear the last code. First, define a global variable declaration. For example, var variable 1 by the type int, initialize it by, for example, 500. Now go to main function. And now we create a local variable inside the main function that it is same as global variable. Like var variable 1 by the type int and initialize it by 200. The names of both variables are the same and it's variable 1 with the difference that one of them is global variable and the other is local variable. Now display the value of variable. ff the value of variable 
one columns percent d backslash n and set variable one we format the code save the project and execute the program now go to terminal first clear the screen and run the project by go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output the value of variable one is 200 so we see that the local variables is preference to the global variables okay we have reached the end of this session i hope you take full advantage of this session until next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about data types concept. Data types in Golang. The type of a variable determines how much space it occupies in storage and how the bit pattern stored is interpreted. Data types specify the type of data that a valid go variable can hold in go language the type is divided into four categories which are as follows first basic type numbers a string and booleans come under this category second aggregate type array and structs come under this category third reference type pointers slices maps functions and channels come under this category and fourth interface type interface is a type in go which is a collection of method signatures basic data type here we will talk about basic data types in the go language the basic data types are further categorized into the three subcategories which are numbers booleans and strings first we will talk about numbers numbers are divided into the three subcategories that are integers floating point numbers and complex numbers integers integers are used to store whole numbers go has several built-in integer types of varying size of storing signed and unsigned integers both signed and unsigned integers are available as the predefined architecture independent integer types is shown in the diagram below the signed integer is represented by int and the unsigned integer is represented by uint. Signed integer includes int, int8, int16, int32, and int64. The size of the generic int type is platform dependent. It is 32 bits wide on a 32 bit system and 64 bits wide on a 64 bit system. Unsigned integers include uint, uint8, uint16, uint32, and uint64. The size of uint type is platform dependent. It is 32 bits wide on a 32 bit system and 64 bits wide on a 64 bit system. When you are working with integer values, you should always use the int data type unless you have a good reason to use the sized or unsized integer types. There are also a couple of alias number types which assign useful names to specific data types. Byte alias for uint8 and rune alias for int32. Byte in Go is an alias for uint8 meaning it is an integer value. This integer value is of 8 bits and it represents 1 by i a number between 0 255. A single byte therefore can represent ASCII characters. Golang does not have any data type of char, therefore byte is used to represent the ASCII character. 
Rune in Go language is an alias for int32, meaning it is an integer value. This integer value is meant to represent a Unicode code point. A run is used to represent a Unicode character, whereas only ASCII characters can be represented solely by an int32 data type. Now go to VS Code program to do an example. First go to Project Explorer, create a folder named like data types and create a file inside it like main.go define a package name so we write package main and define main function func main in this case we want to define two integer variables first a 8-bit unsigned integer and second define a 16-bit signed integer so first define var a u int 8 and initialize it by for example 200 and display this variable fp a and go to the next line and define another variable for example var b in 16 and initialize it by the value minus 15432 and now go to the next line and display this variable fp b okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program go to a terminal first go to project folder cd data types clear a screen and run the program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output first we define a uint8 variable and initialize it by 200 and second we define an int 16 variable and initialize it by the value minus 15432 so we could define two variables by the type signed and unsigned integer in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye <laughs>
column equals for example 46.26 now we want to subtract these variables together so first define another variable like c column equals b minus a and now display the result value and type of c variable so ff a initialize percent f because type of variable a and b is followed so we use from percent f as format string backslash n and set a go to the next line ff b initialize percent f backslash n and set b and ff we want to display the result of b minus a so we write percent f for display the variable b minus percent f for display the variable a equals percent f for variable c because the values of variables a and b are decimal the subtraction of two variables a and b from each other will also be a decimal value so we use from percent f as a string format for the c variable and we said b comma a comma c now go to the next line and display type of c variable so we write ff type of c column percent t uppercase and set c variable put a backslash in here and reformat the code save the project and execute the program so go to terminal and execute the program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output a equals 35.78 and b equals 46.26 and b minus a means 46.26 minus 35.78 equals to 10.48 and type of c is float 64. okay in this session we could define floating point variables initialize them and display in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to GoLang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about floating point numbers. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's data types concept. Complex numbers. Complex numbers are one of the basic types in Go Lang. Go has two complex types of different sizes. Complex 64 and complex 128. Float 32 and Float 64 are also part of these complex numbers. The inbuilt function creates the complex number from its imaginary and real part and inbuilt imaginary and real function extract those parts. Complex 64 Complex numbers which contains Float 32 as a real and imaginary component. Complex 128 Complex numbers which contain float 64 as a real and imaginary component. The default type for a complex number in GoLang is complex 128. Now let's go to VS Code program and illustrate how to use of complex numbers. First define two variables like var a equals 2.35 and var b equals 3.76 go also provides a built-in function named complex for creating complex numbers 
If you are creating a complex number with the variables instead of literals, then you will need to use the complex function. So we create a complex number by complex function. Now we define a variable like var c and initialize it by complex function complex and set a and b as arguments for this function now display value and type of c variable fp c and ff type of c colon person t uppercase and set C variable. Reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Go run dot backslash main dot go. Now we can see the output. The value is 2.35 plus 3.76i, and type of C variable is complex 128. Note that both real and imaginary parts of the complex number must be of the same floating point type. If you try to create a complex number with different real and imaginary part types, then the compiler will throw an error. So we do another sample. First clear the last code. And define two variables by two types. For example, var a float 32 and initialize it by 4.92 and define another variable like var b by the type float 64 and initialize it by the value for example 7.38 and now go to the next line and define another variable like var c equals and create a complex number by calling complex function complex and set a and b as arguments for it a and b okay we have error the following statement won't compile both real and imaginary parts must be of the same floating point type here a is float 32 and b is float 64 and it won't compile and it has compiled error okay you can perform arithmetic operations like addition subtraction multiplication and division on complex number so first clear the last code so define a variable like var a equals 3 plus 5 i and define another variable like var b e equals 2 plus 3 i Now define another variable like result1 for addition two variables a and b together var result1 equals a plus b and go to the next line and define another variable like var result2 for subtraction between a and b b minus a and go to the next line define another variable var result 3 equals a multiplication b and another variable like var result 4 equals a division b now go to next line and display the results value fp result 1 result 2 result 3 and result 4 reformat the code save the project and execute the program now run the command go run dot backslash main dot go Now we can see the output and we could perform arithmetic operations on complex numbers. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye.
Hello and welcome to GoLang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about complex numbers. And in this session, we want to talk about the other data types concept. Booleans. The Boolean data type represents only one bit of information, either true or false, and is defined as bool when declaring it as a data type. The values of type Boolean are not converted implicitly or explicitly to any other type. Default value for bool is false. Now let's go to VS Code program and illustrate how to use of Booleans. First, we define three variables by a string type and assign values to them. So we write str1 column equals and initialize it by the value go programming. Go to the next line and define another variable like str2 column equals and initialize it by all characters uppercase. Go programming. Okay. Go to the next line and define another variable like str3 colon equals and initialize it by value like value of str1. Go programming. Okay, now we want to compare the values of the two variables str1 and str2 and put the result of their value equal or unequal inside the result1 variable. So go to the next line and define another variable like result1 colon equals str1 equal equal str2. If the values of these two variables are equal to each other, the value of true is assigned to the result1 variable. Otherwise, the value of false is assigned to it. We also do this comparison for the two variables str1 and str3 and put the value in result2 variable. So go to the next line and define another variable like result2 column equals str1 equal equal to str3. Now display the values of result variables. So we write fp result 1 column result 1 go to next line fp result 2 column result 2 and go to the next line and display type of these variables so we write ff type of result 1 column percent t uppercase result 1 and set a backslash n and ff type of result 2 column percent t and set result 2 okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program now run the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output result 1 is false and result 2 is true and type of result 1 and result 2 is bool okay we could define boolean variable and initialize them in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the GoLang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about Booleans. And in this session, we want to talk about the other data types concept. Strings. In Go language, strings can be seen as a collection of characters. A string can be of length one, one character, but it's usually longer. 
A string is always written in double quotes. Now you can see the syntax. So the string data type represents a sequence of Unicode code points. Or in other words, we can say a string is a sequence of immutable bytes. Means when a string is created, you cannot change that string. A string may contain arbitrary data, including bytes with zero value in the human readable form. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use the string. First define a variable which stores a strings used from short declaration. So we write str column equals and initialize it by go programming language and go to the next line. In this case, we want to display the value of str. So we write ff the value of str column percent s lowercase because the type of str is a string we use from percent s lowercase as format string. And we set str. Go to the next line and display type of the variable. So we write ff the type of str column percent t uppercase and we said str okay here we want to display the length of the string so use from length function the length function gets the string as argument and returns the length of the string as integer so go to the next line and write ff the length of str column percent d because return type of length function is integer so we use from percent d as format string and calling length function and set str as argument to it put a backslash n end of each line for go to a new line Reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program by running the command go run main go. Now we can see the output. The value of str is go programming language. The type of str is a string, and the length of str is 23. Due to the importance of a string, this topic will be fully explored in future chapters. Okay, we have reached the end of this session. I hope you take full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about operators concept. Golang operators. An operator is a symbol that tells the compiler to perform certain actions. Thus, the functionality of the Go language is incomplete without the use of operators. Operators allow us to perform different kinds of operations on operands. In Go language, operators can be categorized based upon their different functionality. Arithmetic operators, assignment operators, relational operators, logical operators, and bitwise operators. Now we are going to talk about operators separately. Arithmetic operators. The arithmetic operators are used to perform common arithmetical operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and etc. Following table shows all the arithmetic operators supported by Go language. Addition adds two operands. Subtraction subtracts second operand from the first. Multiplication 
multiplies both operands. Division divides the numerator by the denominator. Modulus gives the remainder after an integer division. Increment it increases the integer value one by one. And decrement it decreases the integer value one by one. Now let's go to VS Code program to display the use of arithmetic operators. First go to the project explorer and define a folder named like operators and create a file inside it like main.go set a package name like package main and define a main function func main first we define two variables such as a column equals 50 and b column equals 30 we want to give an example of an addition so define a variable like result and pour the sum of two variables a and b into it so define a variable like result one column equals a plus b addition operator adds two operands in this case addition a and b now write the following code to display in output so we write ff addition result of a plus b equals percent d and set backslash n and put result one reformat the code save the project and execute the program go to a terminal first go to a project folder cd operators clear a screen and run the program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output addition result of a plus b equals a t the sum of two values a and b was added to the result one variable and its value is equal to 80 and we could use from addition operand another case subtraction now we want to give an example of a subtraction so define a variable like result 2 and subtract the two values a and b into it so clear the last code so define a variable like result 2 column equals a minus b subtraction operator subtracts second operand from the first operand in this case subtract a and b now write following code to display an output so we write ff subtraction result of a minus b equals percent d and set result to reformat the code save the project and execute the program first clear screen and run the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output subtraction result of a minus b equals 20 subtract the two values a and b into the result two variable and its value is equal to 20 and we could use from subtraction operand another case multiplication now we want to give an example of a multiplication so define a variable like result 3 and multiplicate the two values a and b into it so clear the last code define a variable like result 3 column equals a multiplication b multiplication operator multiplicates two operands in this case multiplication a and b 
Now write following code to display in output. FF multiplication result of A multiplicate B equals percent D and we said result 3. We format the code, save the project and execute the program. Now we can see the output. Multiplication result of A and B equals 1500. The product of two values A and B was poured into result 3 and its value is equal to 1500. And we could use from multiplication operand. Another case, division. Now we want to give an example of a division. First clear the last code. Now define a variable like result 4 and divide the values a and b by each other and put the result into it. So we write result 4 column equals a division b. Go to the next line. Division divides the numerator by the denominator. In this case, division A and B. Now write following code to display the output. So we write FF division result of A and B equals percent D and we set result 4. Reformat the code, save the project and execute the program. Now we can see the output. Division result A and B equals 1. The division of two values A and B was poured into result 4 and its value is equal to 1. And we could use from division operand. Another case, modulus. Now we want to give an example of modulus. First clear the last code. Define a variable like result 5 and divide the values a and b by each other and put the result into it. For example, result 5 column equals a modulus b. Go to the next line. Modulus operands gives the reminder after an integer division. So write following code to display an output ff modulus result of a percent percent b equals percent d and we set result 5 we format the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output. Modulus result of A and B equals 20. The number A was divided by the number B and the reminder was added to the result 5 variable. And we could use from division operand. Another case, increment. Now we want to give an example of an increment. So first clear the last code. First define a variable like a column equals 20 and increment the value of a variable but before it we want to display the variable a fp before increment display a and increment a variable. Increment operands increases the integer value one by one. So we write a plus plus and go to the next line and display a again. FP after increment and we display a. We format the code, save the project and execute the program. Now we can see the output. 
before increment a is 20 and after increment a is 21 so we could use from increment operand another case decrement now we want to give an example of decrement first clear the last code define a variable like a and initialize it by 20 and display before decrement it and now we want to decrement the a variable decrement operand decreases the integer value one by one so we write a minus minus and go to the next line and display a variable again fp after decrement and we display a here we change it to b for decrement we format the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output before decrement the value variable a is 20 and after decrement the value of a variable is 90 and we could use from decrement operand in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye hello and welcome to the golang programming language course in the previous session we talked about arithmetic operators and in this session we want to talk about the others operators concept assignment operators assignment operators are used to assigning a value to a variable the left side operand of the assignment operator is a variable and right side operand of the assignment operator is a value. The value on the right side must be of the same data type of the variable on the left side. Otherwise, the compiler will raise an error. Assignment operators in Go language are simple assignment operator, add and assignment operator, subtract and assignment operator, multiply and assignment operator, divide and assignment operator, and modulus and assignment operator. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use of assignment operators. First, we define two variables and initialize them. For example, var a by the type int equals 30 and var b by the type int and equals 50 now create a sample for simple assignment operator now we will write a equals b okay a variable value is equivalent b variable value now go to the next line and display values of variable a and b so we write fb a equals set a variable and go to the next line fp b equals comma b so reformat the code save the project and execute the program go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output a equals 50 b equals 50 so a variable value is equivalent b variable value now create a sample for add and assignment operator so first clear the last code so we write a plus equals b it adds right operand to the left operand and assign the result to left operand it means a equals a plus b now we display the value of a variable so we write fp a equals a save the project and execute the program first clear screen go run dot backslash main dot go 
Now we can see the output. A variable value is equivalent to the sum of variable A and B. And it is AT. Now create a sample for subtract and assignment operator. So first clear the last code. A minus equals B. It subtracts right operand from the left operand and assign the result to left operand. It means A equals A minus B. Now we display the value of A variable. So we write FP A equals comma A. Save the project and execute the program. Now we can see the output A variable value is equivalent to subtraction of variables A and B and it's equals minus 20. Now create a sample for multiply and assignment operator. So clear the last code. A multiplication equals B. It multiplies right operand with the left operand and assign the result to left operand. It means A equals A multiplication B. Now go to the next line and display the value of A variable. So we write FP A equals comma A. Save the project and execute the program. Now we can see the output A equals 1500. A variable value is equivalent to multiplication of variables A and B. Now we want to create a sample for divide and assignment operator. So first clear the last code. And we write A divide equals B. It divides left operand with the right operand and assign the result to left operand. It means A equals A division B. Now go to the next line and display the value of A variable. So we write FB A equals comma A. Save the project and execute the program. Now we can see the output A equals 0. The value of the variable A is equal to the division of the variable A by B and it's 0. Now create a sample for modulus and assignment operator. So first clear the last code. A modulus equals B. It takes modulus using two operands and assigns the result to left operand and it means A equals A modulus B. Now go to the next line and display the value of A variable. So we write FB A equals comma A. Reformat the code, save the project and execute the program. Now we can see the output A equals 30. The value of variable A is equal to the reminder of the division of variable A by B and it's 30. Okay, we were able to explain the assignment operators and give examples. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about assignment operators. And in this session, we want to talk about the others operators concept. Compersion operators. Compersion operators or relational operators are used to compare two values. Compersion operators in Go language are equal to, not equal to, less than, 
less than equal to greater than and greater than equal to now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use compression operators first we define two variables and initialize them for example a colon equals 50 and b colon equals 40 at first we want to create a sample for equal to operator so we write result one column equals a equal to b equal to operator checks whether the two given operands are equal or not if so it returns true otherwise it returns false for the example if the values of a and b are equal to each other the value of true will be stored in the result one variable otherwise the value of false will be assigned to it now display the value of result one variable so we write fp a equal to b column comma result one reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output result one value is equivalent false because the values of these two variables are not equal to each other and a equal to b is false now create a sample for not equal to operator so first clear the last code and define a variable like result two column equals a not equal to b not equal to operator checks whether the two given operands are equal or not if not it returns true now go to the next line and display the result of variable to fp a not equal b column and we set result to reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output result one value is equivalent true because the values of these two variables are not equal to each other a not equal to b and it returns true now create a sample for less than operator so first clear the last code define a variable like result 3 column equals a less than b less than operator checks whether the first operand is lesser than the second operand if so it returns true otherwise it returns false so go to the next line and display the value of result 3 variable fp a less than b column and we set result 3 deformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output result three value is equivalent false because the value of a variable is not less than b variable and it returns false now create a sample for less than equal to operator so first clear the last code define a variable lock like result for column equals a less than equal to b less than equal to operator checks whether the first operand is lesser than or equal to the second operand if so it returns true otherwise it returns false so go to the next line and display the result for value fp a less than equal to b column and we set result 4 we format the code save the project and execute the program again now we can see the output result 4 value is equivalent false 
because the value of a variable is not lesser than or equal to b variable and it returns false now we want to create a sample for greater than operator so first clear the last code so define a variable like result 5 column equals a greater than b greater than operator checks whether the first operand is greater than the second operand if so it returns true otherwise it returns false now go to the next line and display the result 5 variable value so we write fp a greater than b column we set result 5 reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output result 5 value is equivalent true because the value of a variable is greater than to b variable and it returns true now we want to create an example for greater than equal to operator so first clear the last code define a variable like result 6 column equals a greater than equal to b greater than equal to operator checks whether the first operand is greater than or equal to the second operand if so it returns true otherwise it returns false so go to the next line and display the result six variable value so we write fp a greater than equal to b column and we set result six variable reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output result 6 value is equivalent true because the value of a variable is greater than equal to b variable and it returns true okay we were able to explain the definition of compression operators and give examples in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about compression operators and in this session we want to talk about the others operators concept logical operators logical operators are used to determine the logic between variables or values they are used to combine two or more condition or constraints or to complement the evaluation of the original condition in consideration Logical operators in Go lang are logical and, logical or, and logical not. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use logical operators. First, define three variables and initialize them. For example, var x, comma, y, comma, z, and initialize by the values 100. 200 and 300 in the first case we want to check logical and operator so we write fp x less than y logical and x greater than z because we use from logical and operator returns true value if both statements are true means x less than y is true and x greater than z is true and we know that if the answer of any statement is false final result will be false now save the project and go to terminal and execute the program so run the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output the result is false. 
In the first section, we want to check whether is the variable x less than the variable y or not, which means whether is 100 less than 200. And the result is true. And in the next session, we want to check whether is the variable x greater than the variable z or not, which means whether is 100 greater than 300 or not. And the result is false. So the logical end operator between true and false returns false value. In the second case, we want to check logical or operator. So first clear the last code. So we write fp x less than y logical or x greater than z because we use from logical or operator written true value if both statements are true and we know that if the answer of any statement is true final result will be true so save the project and execute the program so we write go run dot backslash main dot go in the first section we want to check whether is the variable x less than the variable y or not which means whether is 100 less than 200 and the result is true and in the next session we want to check whether is the variable x greater than the variable z or not which means whether is 100 greater than 300 or not and the result is false so the logical or operator between true and false return true value third case in this case we want to check logical not so first clear the last code we write fp logical not open and close parentheses x equal to y logical and x greater than z okay because we use from logical not operator reverse the result returns false if the result is true or returns true if the result is false so reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output result is true in the first section we want to check whether is the variable x equal to y or not which means whether is 100 equals 200 and the result is false and in the next section we want to check whether is the variable x greater than the variable z or not which means whether is 100 greater than 300 or not and the result is false so the logical and operator between false and false return false value and logical not operator or false value is true so the final result is true okay we were able to explain the definition of logical operators and give examples in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye <laughs>
First, we define a variable and initialize it by an expression. For example, we define a variable like x colon equal and initialize it by 7 plus 3 multiplication 2. Now display the output by the following command. So we write ff result column percent d and set x variable. Reformat the code, save the project and execute the program. Now we can see the output. Result is 13. Here x is assigned 13 not 20 because operator multiplication has higher credence than operator plus so it first gets multiplied with 3 multiplication 2 and result is 6 and then 6 value adds into 7 and final result is 13. okay we were able to explain operators precedence in go language and give examples we have reached the end of this session. I hope you take full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about decision-making concept. Go length decision making. Decision making in programming is similar to decision making in real life. In decision making, a piece of code is executed when the given condition is fully filled. Sometimes these are also termed as the control flow statements. Go length uses control statements to control the flow of execution of the program based on certain conditions. These are used to cause the flow of execution to advance and branch based on changes to the state of a program. Like most programming languages, GoLang borrows several of its control flow syntax from the C family of languages. In GoLang, we have the following conditional statements. The if statement executes some code if one condition is true. The if else statement executes some code if a condition is true and another code if that condition is false. Nested if statement, you can use one if or else if statement inside another if or else if statements. The if else if else statement executes different codes for more than two conditions. And the switch case statements selects one of many blocks of code to be executed. If a statement. This is the simplest decision making statement. It is used to decide whether a certain statement or block of statements will be executed or not. If a certain condition is true, then a block of a statement is executed, otherwise, not. Now you can see the fellow diagram of if a statement. If the condition has a true value, so if block execute. Otherwise, if block does not execute. Now let's go to VS Code and illustrate how to use if a statement. First, go to Project Explorer, create a folder named like decision making, and define a file inside it like main. Dot go. Set package name, package main, and define main function func main. Okay, in this sample, we want to print a message based on a condition. So first, define two variables like var a by the type int and initialize it by ten value and define another like var b by the type int and initialize it by 20. 
Now write a condition. For the example, if a variable value less than b variable value, so print a message for us. So we write if a less than b, open and close curly braces and set our statements here. So we write fp a value is less than b value. Okay, reformat the code, save the project and execute the program. So go to terminal, first go to project folder, see the decision making, killer risking and run the program by the command go run.backslashmain.go. Now you can see the output. A value is less than B value. The value of the variable A is less than the value of the variable B. It means 10 less than 20. So our condition returns true value. And the statements inside the if block are executed and printed the message A value is less than B value. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about if statement. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's decision-making concept. If-else statement. The if statement alone tells us that if a condition is true, it will execute a block of statements. And if the condition is false, it won't. But what if we want to do something else if the condition is false? Here comes the else statement. We can use the else statement with if statement to execute a block of code when the condition is false. Now you can see the flow diagram of if else statement. If the condition evaluates to true, then the if block of code will be executed. And if the condition evaluates to false, then the else block of code is executed. Now let's go to VS Code program and illustrate how to use if else statement. Okay, in this example, we want to print a message based on if else statement. So first define two variables like var a by the type int, initialize it by 30 value, and go to the next line and define another variable like var b by the type int and initialize it by 20. Now write condition by if else statement. First define if block if and set a condition a less than b. So set a statement for example fp a value is less than b value. And go out of if block and set else block. So we write else, open and close curly braces, and set a statement for this block. For example, fp a value is greater than b value. Okay. If the condition has a true value, so the if block will be executed. Otherwise, the else block will be executed. Reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Go to a terminal and run the program by the command go run.backslashmain.go. Now you can see the output. A value is greater than B value. The value of the variable A is greater than the value of the variable B. It means 30 greater than 20. So our condition returns false value and the statements inside the else block are executed and printed the message A value is greater than B value. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. <laughs>
Hello and welcome to GoLang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about if-else statement. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's decision-making concept. Nested if statement. It is always legal in Go programming language to nest if-else statements, which means you can use one if or else if statement inside another if or else if statements. If the first condition evaluates to true, then the if block of condition 1 will execute. And in the first if block, it exists another if block, so if the condition 2 value evaluates true, also the if block of second condition will execute too. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use nested if statement. First, define two variables like var a by the type int and initialize it by 300. And define another variable like var b by the type int and initialize it by 500. In this case, we want to write nested if statement. So we write first condition if a equal equals 300. So set a statement. For the statement of this if block, we want to check if condition is true, set another condition, like if b equal equal 500, so set a statement, fp value of a is 300 and value of b is 500 and go out of the nested if block and display the variables a and b values so we write ff a value column person d backslash n and set a variable and go to the next line and display the b variable value so we write ff b value column person d and set b value okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program now go to terminal and run the program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output value of a is 300 and value of b is 500 a value is 300 b value is 500 the value of the variable a is 300 so the first condition evaluates true value and compiler go to execute the first if block in this block it exists another condition that evaluates true because variable b has 500 value so the statements inside the second if block are executed and printed the message value of a is 300 and value of b is 500 when the compiler go out from the first if block, it will be executed to printf function. A value is 300 and B value is 500. Okay, in this case, we could define nested if statement. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to GoLang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about nested if statement. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's decision-making concept. If, else, if, else statement. The if, else, if, else statement allows to combine multiple if, else statements. The if statements are executed from the top down. As soon as one of the conditions controlling the if is true, the statement associated with that if is executed, and the rest of the ladder is bypassed. If none of the condition is true, then the final else statement will be executed. 
Now you can see the fellow diagram for if else if else statement. When program runs, first compiler checks if condition. Then if it is evaluated as true, the body of if condition will execute otherwise the compiler will go to else if condition and check the value of it. In this case, if it is evaluated as true, the compiler will execute the body of else if statement. Otherwise, the compiler will go to other else if blocks. If all else if statements would be evaluated as false, then else block will be executed finally. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use from if else if else statement. In this case, we define two variables by the same values. For example, var a by the type int and initialize it by 100 and define another variable like var b by the type int and initialize it by 100 again. Now we want to write if else if and else statement. So first define if condition if a less than b so go to calibrations and write a statement for this condition so we write fp a value is less than b value and go out of the if block condition and define a else if condition so we write else if and define condition for this block for example a equal equals b go to curly braces and set a statement for this condition for example fp a value is equal b value and go out of the else if block and define else block so we write else and set a statement for this block so we write fp a value is greater than b value okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program so go to terminal and run program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output. A value is equal B value. In this example, because variable A and variable B have the same values, so the else if block will be executed. Okay, we could define if else if else statement. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about if, else if, else statement. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's decision-making concept. Switch statement. A switch statement is a multi-way branch statement. It provides an efficient way to transfer the execution to different parts of a code based on the value, also called case, of the expression. Go language supports two types of switch statements. First, expression switch and second, type switch. Expression switch is similar to switch statement in C or C++ or Java language. It provides an easy way to dispatch execution to different parts of code based on the value of the expression. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code and illustrate how to use switch statement. In this example, we want to assign a number to each day of the week and implement it through the expression switch. First define a variable like today, so we write var 
today by the type int and initialize it by two. Now write the switch case on the today variable. So we write switch, open and close curly braces, and define case. For example, for the first case, we assign one value for today variable. So we write case today equal equal one column. And in this case, set a statement for this case. For example, fp today is Monday. Go to the next line and define another cases. For example, case today equal equals two column go to the next line and set a statement fp today is tuesday go to the next line define another case case today equal equal three column set a statement for this case for example fp today is wednesday and go to the next line and define another case for example case today equal equals four column go to the next line and set a statement for this case fp today is thursday case today equals five column FP today is Friday and case today equals six column we set a statement like today is Saturday and case today equal equals seven so we write fp today is sunday okay and go to the next line and define a default case so we write default and set a statement for it for example fp value for today is invalid Okay, reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Now go to terminal and run the program by the command go run dot backslash name dot go. Now we can see the output. Today is Tuesday. Because we assigned two value to today variable, so compiler executed the case that today assigned by two value and returns the today is Tuesday. Now go to a slice and continue. Type switch. Type switch is used when you want to compare types. In this switch, the case contains the type switch is going to compare with the type present in the switch expression. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code program and illustrate how to use type switch. First, define an empty interface that has a string value. So we write var, define a variable like value by the type empty interface and initialize it by a string value. For example, go programming language. Now go to the next line and define a switch case to find out the empty interface type. So we write switch, define a variable like a column equals value dot open and close parentheses and set type for it. Open and close curly braces. Now define cases to check the condition. In this case, we put data types. For the example, if type is an integer, so we write case in 64. Case in 64, column, 
and set a statement for this case for example fp type is integer column and set variable a go to the next line and define another cases for example type of floating point number so we write case float 64 column and set a statement for this case fp type is float column and set variable a go to the next line and define a string type for example case a string column and set a statement for this case fp type is a string column and set variable a if type is other than these three we define default keyword so go to the next line and define default keyword column and set a statement for this fp type is unknown reformat the code save the project and execute the program now go to terminal and run the program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output type is a string and value is go programming language because we initialize empty interface value by a string type so a string case has returned for us we have reached the end of this session. I hope you take full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In this session, we want to talk about loops and control statements. loops in go language go language contains only a single loop that is for loop a for loop is a repetition control structure that allows us to write a loop that is executed a specific number of times in go language this for loop can be used in the different forms and the forms are simple for loop loop as infinite loop and for loop as while loop as simple for loop a for loop is used for iterating over a sequence that is either a slice an array a map or a string it is similar that we use in the other programming languages like C, C++, Java, C Sharp, and etc. Now you can see the syntax. Here, the initialization statement is optional and executes before for loop stars. The initialization statement is always in a simple statement like variable declarations, increment or assignment statements, or function calls. The condition statement holds a Boolean expression which is evaluated at the starting of each iteration of the loop. If the value of the conditional statement is true, then the loop executes. Increment or the post statement is executed after the body of the for loop. After the post statement, the condition statement evaluate the gain. If the value of the conditional statement is false, then the loops end. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use for loop. First go to project explorer, create a project folder named like loops and create a file inside it like main.go define package name and define main function okay first define a simple for loop for so we write for define a variable for initialization for example i column equals and initialize it by zero semicolon and define condition for this for loop for example i less than five 
In this case, we want to print numbers between 0 until 5. Semicolon. And uh, we want to increment i variable 1 by 1. So we write i plus plus. Open and close curly braces. And we write statements in curly braces. So we write ff i equals percent d. Put a backslash t for a tab space and type a message for example go programming language and set a backslash n for go to a new line and define variable i okay these loops start when i equals zero and execute until i less than five now save the project Go to a terminal and execute the program. First, go to project folder, cd loops, clear the screen, and run the program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go. Now we can see the output. We could print it go programming language five times by simple for loop from i equals zero until i equals four. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about simple for loop. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's loops and control statements. For loop as infinite loop. A for loop is also used as infinite loop by removing all the three expressions from the for loop. When the user did not write condition statement in for loop, it means the condition statement is true and the loop goes into an infinite loop. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use of an infinite loop. In this case, we want to define an infinite loop and print a message. So we write for without any expression, open and curly braces and put our statements in curly braces. So we write fp go programming language. Reformat the code, save the project and execute the program. So go to terminal and run the program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output we could print it go programming language and this loop continues infinitely so press ctrl plus c buttons to terminate the execution of program okay in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session Goodbye. Hello and welcome to Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about for loop as infinite loop. And in this session, we want to talk about the other loops and control statements. for loop as while loop a for loop can also work as a while loop this loop is executed until the given condition is true when the value of the given condition is false the loop ends now you can see the syntax let's go to vs code program to illustrate how to use for loop as a while loop First, define a variable as loop initialization. For example, define a variable like i colon equals and initialize it by 1. Now, define loop at set and condition for terminate it. For example, for set condition i less than 5, open and close curly braces and write the statements here. 
For example, in this case, we want to print i variable value. So we write fp i and go to the next line. Now we must always increment the iterator. Here it's i variable. So we write i plus plus. Okay, reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Now go to terminal, run the program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go. Now we can see the output one, two, three, four. In this example, we define the variable named i and initialize it with a value of one. And then, as long as i is less than 5, one unit is added to the variable i each time. And we were able to use the for loop as a while loop. Also, the code block can be as many lines as you want. In this example, it's just one line of code that gets repeated. Okay, in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about for loop as while loop. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's loops and control statements. Loop control statements in Go language. Loop control statements change an execution from its normal sequence. When an execution leaves its scope, all automatic objects that were created in that scope are destroyed. The Go language supports three types of loop control statements. Break statement, continue statement, and go to a statement. Break statement. The break statement in Go programming language has the following two usages. First, when a break statement is encountered inside the loop, the loop is immediately terminated, and the program control resumes at the next statement following the loop. Second, it can be used to terminate a case in a switch statement. If you are using nested loops, the break statement will stop the execution of the innermost loop and start executing the next line of code after the block. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use a break statement. First define a for loop and print 0 until 4. So we write for, define a variable i column equals and initialize it by zero value, semicolon, set condition i less than five, and set increment, so we write i plus plus. Open and curly braces and write our statements here. In this case, we want to display our variable value. So we write fp, I. Now define that loop breaks when the value of i equals 3. So go to the next line, define a condition if i equals equals 3. So we want to set a break statement. Okay, reformat the code, save the project and execute the program. So go to terminal and run the program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go. Now we can see the output. In this example, we define the for loop that starts from zero until as long as i is less than five. And one unit is added to the variable i each time and print the value of i variable. And define a breakpoint where i equals three so when i variable value is 3, for loop will broken. 
So we can no longer display the value 4 and the program exits from the block. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about break statement. And in this session, we want to talk about the others control statements. Continue statement. The continue statement in Go programming language works somewhat like a break statement. Instead of forcing termination, a continue statement forces the next iteration of the loop to take place, skipping any code in between. In case of the for loop, continuous statement causes the conditional test and increment portions of the loop to the executes. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use of continuous statement. First define a variable named x and initialize by zero value. So we write var x by the type int equals zero. Create a loop that works as a while loop and define a condition and program will continue as long as the value of x is less than eight, print value of x variable and then add one unit to x variable. Now do the following. So first define a loop for by the condition x less than 8. Open and close curly braces and write our statements here. Now in for block we define an if block and set if x equal equal 5 value add 2 value to x and continue the for loop. So we write if x equal equals to 5 so skip two iterations x equals x plus 2 and continue the statement go out of the if blocks and display the value of x so we write ff value is person d and set the backslash n and set x variable and after it we iterate the x variable one by one so we write x plus plus reformat the code save the project and execute the program now go to terminal and run go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output. Value is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and value is 7. And we don't see value is 5 and 6. The program runs at each time first prints the value of the variable x. And then adds one unit to variable x until the value of x equals 5. In this case, the program enters the if block and executes the comment inside the if block and adds two units to x variable and jumps from two repetition and escapes the value of 5 and 6 and the continue for loop. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about continuous statement. And in this session, we want to talk about the others control statements. Go to a statement. A go to a statement in Go Programming Language provides an unconditional jump from the go to to a labeled statement in the same function. Use of go to a statement is highly discouraged in any programming language 
because it becomes difficult to trace the control flow of the program, making the program difficult to understand and modify. Any program that uses a go-to can be written using some other construct. Now you can see the syntax. Here, label can be any plain text except go keyword and it can be set anywhere in go program above or below to go to a statement. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use of go to statement. First define a variable named x and initialize it by zero value. So we write var x by the type int and initialize it by zero value. Create a loop that works as a while loop and define a condition and program will continue as long as the value of x is less than 8 and print value of x variable and then add one unit to x variable. Now do the following. First define a label like label 1, label 1, column and go to the next line and define a while loop so we write for and set condition in this case x less than 8 open and curl braces and write our statement here now define our if block so we write if for example x equal equal 5 set a statement for this if block for example x equals x plus 1 and now using go to statement so we write go to label 1 and now go out of if block and display the x variable so we write ff value of x column person d backslash n and set x variable and in the next line iterate our x variable one by one so we write x plus plus okay in for block we define an if block and set if x equal equal five value add one value to x and go to to the label one position and continue the program okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program so go to terminal and run the program by the command go run dot backslash main dot go okay now we can see the output value of x is 0 1 2 3 4 6 7 and we can see the value of x equals 5 the program runs and each time first prints the value of the x variable and then adds one unit to the variable x until the value of x equals 5. In this case, the program enters the if block and executes the comments inside the if block and adds one unit to x and jumps from one repetition and escapes the value 5 and then go to the first of loop and check the value of x and continue. So we could define go to a statement. We have reached the end of this session. I hope you take full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about Array's concept. Arrays in Go Arrays in Golang is much similar to other programming languages. In the program, sometimes we need to store a collection of data of the same type, like a list of student marks. Such type of collection is stored in the program using an array. An array is a fixed length sequence that is used to store homogeneous elements in the memory. Due to their fixed length array are not much popular like a slice in Go language. 
In an array, you are allowed to store zero or more than zero elements in it. The elements of the array are indexed by using the square brackets index operator with their zero based position, means the index of the first element is array zero and the index of the last element is array length array minus one. Creating and accessing in array. In Go language, arrays are created in two different ways. First, using var keyword declaration, and second, using shorthand declaration. First, using var keyword. In Go language, an array is created using the var keyword of a particular type with name, size, and elements. You can see the syntax in a slide. Important points. First, in Go language, arrays are mutable, so that you can use array index syntax to the left-hand side of the assignment to set the elements of the array at the given index. Second, you can access the elements of the array by using the index value or by using for loop. Third, in Go language, the array type is one-dimensional. Fourth, the length of the array is fixed and unchangeable. And fifth, you are allowed to store duplicate elements in an array. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to create an array using the var keyword and accessing the elements of the array using their index value. First go to Explorer and create a project folder. For the example, array. And create a file like main.go package main and create function main. Okay, everything is okay. First, creating an array of a string type and using var keyword. Do the following var names square brackets three and type of variable a string you can access or assign the array elements by referring to the index number the index is specified in square brackets for the example names square bracket zero equals gym and the other names square bracket one equals Kim and the next line names square bracket index two equals Alex now we can access the elements of the array by using index value when invoke the index of an element, it will return the value of that element. Now do the following. For the example, display a message fp arrays elements. Go to the next line fp elements one column. Names square bracket zero. It returns the value of index zero of names variable. Go to the next line FP elements two column names square bracket index one and FP. elements three columns names square bracket index two save the project and execute the code
go now we can see the output arrays elements elements 1 equals gym elements 2 equals kim and elements 3 equals alex in this sample first we define an array variable via var keyword then initialize element of array by index and print the value of array by accessing via index of array elements now go to a slide and continue second way for creating and accessing an array is using shorthand declaration in go language arrays can also declare using shorthand declaration you can see the syntax for it now go to vs code to illustrate how to create an array using shorthand declaration and accessing the elements of the array using for loop first clear the last code Save the project. Define an array by shorthand declaration. For the example, create an array named names. Column equals a square bracket and set the length for array. Four and set the type a string and curly brackets for initialize the variable. G comma key comma alex and comma david we could define a names array variable and initialize it go to the next line and accessing the elements of the array using for loop first write a message fp elements of array column and go to the next line define a loop for iterate the elements of array for i column equals zero i less than four because the length of array is four and i plus plus in the next line we create a code that return the value of each element of array by names a square bracket index i reformat the code save the project and execute the code now we can see the output elements of array is gene kim alex and david in this sample, first we define an array variable via shorthand declaration and initialize elements of it, then accessing the value of array by iterate the elements of it by for loop. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the last session, we talked about creating and accessing an array. In this session, we want to talk about the others, arrays concept. Initializing an array with ellipses. When we use ellipses instead of specifying the length, the compiler can identify the length of an array based on the elements specified in the array declaration. Now go to VS Code and do an example. First define an array without specifying the length. x colon equals square brackets and ellipses and type and initialize it 10 comma 20 and comma 30 in this case compiler define array length based elements now display the lengths 
fp length of array column length function x reformat the code save the project and execute the code now we can see the output length of array is 3 and we could use from ellipses for define the length of array now go to slides and continue initialize values for a specific array elements when an array declare using an array literal values can be initialized for a specific elements now go to VS Code to illustrate how to create an array using a specific array element. First clear the last code. Save the project. Define an array. For the example, x colon equals square brackets and uh, set the five value for length of array and set the type curly brackets for initialize the array for the example one colon ten and comma three colon thirty it means a variable of ten is assigned to the second element that is index 1 and the value of 30 is assigned to the fourth element that is index 3 now display the array fp x save the project and execute the code now we can see the output 0 10 0 30 and 0 we could initialize the value 10 and 30 for index 1 and index 3 and the other indexes have the 0 value because we did not assign value to the other indexes and the default value of 0 is stored inside them okay now go to a slide and continue Filter array elements in Go. In Golang, you can filter array element. Now go to VS Code and illustrate how to use from column symbol for filter arrays. First, clear the last code. Set the project and define a string like names colon equals Score brackets set the length 5 type is a string and initialize the variable king gym bill robert and david Display the array by the following code ff names percent v backslash n and sets the variable names. Now save the project and execute the code. Now we can see the output. We create and initialize an array variable and print it name king jean bill robert and david now go to the code and use colon for filtering the array element for the example we use from this code names square brackets and set the column it means extract all elements of names array starting from zero index till the end 
Now save the project and execute the code. Now we can see all elements of array printed. Go to the code, comment this line and go to the next line and do another sample, write the following code. FP names a square bracket colon three. Save the project. It means extract elements of names array starting from zeros index till third index, but not including index three. Execute the code. We can see Kim, Jim, Bill array elements from zero till three, but not including index three. Do another example. First comment this line. Go to the next line. FP. Names. Square brackets. For the example. Two. Column. Save the project. Two columns. It means extract elements of names starting from second index till the end. Now execute the code. And we can see the output Bill, Robert, and David from second index until the end of it. Do another example. Comment this line. FP. Names. A square bracket one column four. It means extract elements of names starting from first index till fourth index, but not including index four. Execute the code. Now we can see the output Jim, Bill, and Robert. It means from first index till fourth index, but not including index 4. Now we could use column for filtering array. Okay, in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about the other arrays concepts. Iterate over an array. You can iterate over an array elements in different ways. For loop for accessing array elements. Range for accessing array elements. Range for accessing array elements and do not display index. And range in for loop as a while loop. First, we want to talk about for loop for accessing array elements. Now go to VS Code and illustrate how to use for loop. First, clear the last code. Save the project. Define an array and initialize it. For the example, int array colon equals square bracket set five value for the length of array and int for the type of array and curly brackets and initialize the value one comma two comma three comma four and comma five. Now display the values of array by for loop. For i colon equals zero, i less than len of int array. For create a condition for loop, we can use from length of array by len function. And then i plus plus display the array values by index. So write these codes fp int array 
square brackets and set the i variable here for return the value of each index. Save the projects and execute the code. First go to the project folder, cd array and run the project. Now we can see the output. In this case, one unit is added each time by I++ and fetch the array elements value by access the index of it and we could iterate between array elements. Now go to a slide and continue. In this case, we want to talk about range for accessing array elements and range for accessing array elements without index and range in for loop as a while loop. Range. The four statements supports one additional form that uses the keyword range to iterate over an expression that evaluates to an array, a slice, map, a string, or channel. Range with array and slices, it returns the index of the item as integer. With maps, it returns the key of the next key value pair. And range either returns one value or two. You can see the syntax. Index is the index of the value we are accessing. Value is the actual value we have on each iteration. And data holds the data structure whose values will be accessed in the loop. Now go to VS Code and do some example. First, clear the last code and comment this for loop and iterate this variable by the range for index comma value colon equals range name of variable int array and display each element by index and value fp index and value save the project execute the code now we can see the output and we could display each element of array by index and value in third way we can display just value by range in for loop and do not display index. For this work, set underscore instead of index and solely print the value. Now, clear screen the last code, comment this code, and do the following. For instead of index, B set underscore comma value column equals range array variable int array and print the value fp value save the project and execute the code Now we can see the output, the value of each element has printed. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we could display the value of each element without index by the range. In the fourth way, we can use the range in for loop as a while loop. Now clear your screen. Comment this code and write the range in for loop as a while loop. First, define a variable like j colon equals zero is as a counter and create a for loop by range for range and name of variable int array 
and display the value of array in each iteration fp int array score brackets and set j variable here for fetch the variable value and after each iteration plus plus j variable j plus plus we format the code save the project and execute the code now we can see the output one two three four five and we could use the range in for loop as a while loop in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In this session, we want to talk about the other arrays concepts. Copy an array by value and reference into another array. You can create copy of an array by assigning an array to a new variable either by value or reference. First value. When we assign the value of one variable in another variable, changing the first variable does not change the second variable because the value of the first variable is copied to the second variable, which is called the value. Second reference. But when we assign the address of one variable in another variable, changing the value of the first variable also changes the value of the second variable, which is called reference. Now go to VS Code and illustrate how to use to copy an array by value and reference into another array. First define an array and initialize it for the example array 1 colon equals square brackets set 3 for the length type string and curly brackets for initialize king g and b so create an array and copy array 1 into this in the next line ray 2 colon equals and copy array 1 to it array 1 data is passed by value now define another variable and copy array 1 into this array 3 colon equals and copy the address of the variable array 1 into this and array 1 in this case, data is passed by reference. If we want to pass a reference value, we use from ampersand symbol before the variable. Now display array1 and array2. ff array1 columns percent v lowercase backslash n and sets array1 then ff array2 columns percent v lowercase backslash n and sets array2 save the projects and continue now we change the index 0 of array1 variable and print all variable again. Do the following. Array1, let's go brackets and index 0 and we change the value of it to, for the example, Alex. Now display all the variables. For this, copy these two lines 
and paste here For display the pointer variables we use from star symbol before variable name So for print the variable array 3 we use this code ff array 3 columns percent v lowercase and sets the star array 3 we format the code save the project and execute the code now we can see the output in the first variable we have changed index 0 value when we print it the first variable is printed with a new value in the second variable because the value of the first variable is copied inside it or in other words data is passed by value so no change will be made in the second variable but in the third variable because the address of the first variable is assigned in the third variable or in other words data is passed by reference the value of the first element of the third variable will also change and the third variable will be printed with a new value now we could copy an array by value and reference into another array in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about the other arrays concepts. Multidimensional array. As we already know that arrays are one dimensional, but you are allowed to create a multidimensional array. Multidimensional arrays are the arrays of arrays of the same type. In Go language, you can create a multidimensional array using the following syntax. In this session, we want to talk about two-dimensional array. A two-dimensional array is, in essence, a list of one-dimensional arrays. To declare a two-dimensional array, write something as follows. Var array name a square bracket x, a square bracket y, and variable type. Where variable type can be any valid Go data type, and array name will be a valid Go identifier. A two-dimensional array can be think as a table which will have x number of rows and y number of columns. For the example, a two-dimensional array which contains two rows and three columns can be shown as below table you can create a multi-dimensional array using var keyword or using shorthand declaration in multi-dimensional array if a cell is not initialized with some value by the user then it will be initialized with zero by the compiler automatically there is no uninitialized concept in the go line now go to VS Code program to illustrate the concept of multidimensional array. Okay. We create and initialize two-dimensional array using shorthand declaration and var keyword declaration. First shorthand declaration. Write the following code. For the example, array one colon equals a square bracket 3 for the rows and a square bracket 3 for the columns and type is a string and curly brackets and initialize the value first 
for the example go java c sharp and set the comma here comma is necessary in the next line another value for the example c comma scala comma pearl and set the comma and in the next line python c plus plus and ruby we format the code now we define two-dimensional array and initialize it accessing the values of the array using for loop so write the following code first print a message fp elements of array one go to the next line and use from for loop create a nested for loop for iterate the array value first for iterate between rows and second for iterate between column for i colon equals zero i less than three because the numbers of row is three and i plus plus and for the columns for j colon equals zero j less than three j plus plus for loop condition is less than three because column numbers of multi-dimensional of array one is three now write the value of each cell for the example row zero and column zero it returns the value of row zero column zero cell or row zero and column one returns value of row zero column one cell now write the code ff percent s backslash t and set the array one here for row set index i and for column set index j after end of each row we go to the next line by the following command f p reformat the code save the project and execute the code now we can see the output we see that the elements of each row and column are displayed separately and printed in three rows and three columns now creating a two-dimensional array using var keyword and initializing a multi-dimensional array using index first clear the last code and define a two-dimensional variable var array two set two value for the row index and set the two value for the column index and data type is int in the next line we initialize the variable array two row zero column zero and initialize value 10 the next line array two row zero and column one set the value 20 these are for the first row array two row one and column zero initialize by 30 value array 2 row 1 
column one and initialize it by 40 print a message fp elements of array 2 go to the next line create a nested for loop for iterate array value first for iterate between rows and second for iterate between column for i colon equals zero i less than two and i plus plus for loop condition is less than two because rows numbers of two dimensional of array two is two and write for loop for the columns for j colon equals zero j less than two j plus plus and for loop condition is less than two because columns number of two dimensional of array two is two now write the value of each cell for the example row zero and column zero and it returns the value of zero zero cell or row zero and column one returns value of zero one cell now write the code ff percent d backslash t and set the variable array to set i for row index and set j for column index after end of each row we go to the next line by the following command go to the next line and fp Okay, we format the code, save the project, and execute the code. Now we can see the output. We see that the elements of each row and column are displayed separately and printed in two rows and two columns by declaration the var keyboard. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In this session, we want to talk about some important things about arrays. One, if an array does not initialize explicitly, then the default value of this array is zero. Two, in an array, you can find the length of the array using length function. 3. In an array, if ellipses become visible at the place of length, then the length of the array is determined by the initialized elements. 4. In an array, you are allowed to iterate over the range of the elements of the array. 5. In an array, if the element type of the array is comparable, then the array type is also comparable. So we can directly compare two arrays using equal to operator. Now go to VS Code program and do some example about these some important things. Okay. First case, if an array does not initialize explicitly, then the default value of this array is zero. First, creating an array of int type which stores two elements. Where my array length two and type is int. We don't initialize this array and display the variable fp my array save the project and execute we can see the output so the value of the array is zero because compiler assigned default value for array okay go to the next case 
In an array, you can find the length of the array using the len function. First, clear the last code. And creating two arrays using short hat declaration. For the example, array one colon equals length three type int curly brackets one comma two comma three. And in the next line, array two colon equals length set by the ellipses and type is int and initialize by one two three four and five now finding the length of the array using length function go to the next line fp length of array one Column len function and set the variable array one. Go to the next line and read this code for the other variable fp length of array two and set the length function and array 2 save the project and execute now we can see the output the length of array 1 is 3 and the length of array 2 is 5 now we could find the length of array by length function go to the next case in an array, if ellipses become visible at the place of length, then the length of the array is determined by the initialized elements. First, clear the last code. Create an array whose size is determined by the number of elements present in it using ellipses. For the example, array colon equals ellipses set for the length, type is a string, and initialize by the values. For the example, go Java C sharp. C++ and Perl. Display the array. FP elements of array column and set the variable array. And in the next line Display the length of the array that is determined by using len function. fp length of array column and len function and set the variable array. Save the project and execute. Now we can see the output and the length of array is 5. And the next case, in an array, you are allowed to iterate over the range of the elements of the array. First, clear the last code. Creating an array whose size is represented by the ellipses. For the example, again, array equals sets ellipses for the length type is int and initialize value by 10 20 30 40 50 and 60 iterate array using for loop for 
i colon equal zero i less than len of array variable i plus plus now display the each element of array variable by the command ff percent d backslash n and array square bracket index i save the project and execute now we can see the output and we could iterate between array elements go to the next case in an array if the elements type of the array is comparable then the array type is also comparable so we can directly compare two arrays using equal to operator first clear the last code define three arrays array one colon equals five int and initialize by the values one two three four and five go to the next line and define another variable array two colon equals set the length by the ellipses and type is int and initialize by the values 1 2 3 4 and 5 and go to the next line and create another variable like array 3 colon equals set the length 5 and type is int and initialize the value for the example 6 2 3 7 and 9 now comparing arrays using equal to operator for the example compare array 1 and array 2 array 2 by array 3 and array 1 by array 3 fp array 1 equal to array 2 and in the next line fp array 2 equal to array 3 and in the next line array 1 equal to array 3 save the project and execute the code now we can see the output first compression is true and the other compression is false we have reached the end of this session. I hope you have taken full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about a slices concept. Slices in Golang In Go language, a slice is more powerful, flexible, and convenient than an array, and is a lightweight data structure. A slice is a variable length sequence which stores elements of a similar type. You are not allowed to store different types of elements in the same slice. It's just like an array having an index value and length, but the size of the slice is resized. They are not in fixed size, just like an array. Internally, a slice and an array are connected with each other. A slice is a reference to an underlying array. It is allowed to store duplicate elements in the slice. The first index position in a slice is always zero, and the last one will be length of a slice minus one. A slice points to an underlying array and is internally represented by a slice header. Unlike array, the size of a slice is flexible and can be changed. Internally, a slice is represented by three things. First, 
pointers pointer to the underlying array second length current length of the underlying array and capacity total capacity which is the maximum capacity to which the underlying array can expand declaration and initialization slices a slice is declared just like an array but it doesn't contain the size of the slice so it can grow or shrink according to the requirement we can define slices in several different ways create a slice using a slice literal create a slice using an array create a slice using already existing slice and create a slice using make function create a slice using a slice literal you can create a slice using the slice literal the creation of a slice literal is just like an array literal but with one difference you are not allowed to specify the size of the slice in the square braces as shown in the below example the right hand side of this expression is the slice literal var my slice a square brackets a string and initialize the value like jim kim and robert always remember when you create a slice using a string literal then it first create an array and after that return a slice reference to it now go to vs code and do an example okay first create a project folder like slices and create a file like main.go and create package package main and create main function func main first creating a slice by using the var keyword for the example var slice one equals a square brackets without any lengths and tie for the example a string and initialize value by go java c sharp and third in the next line display the slice variable fp slice one colon and set the variable slice one now creating a slice by using shorthand declaration for the example a slice two colon equals a square brackets without define any lengths and define type for the example int and initialize value by one comma two comma three four five six and seven go to the next line and display this variable by the command fmt.println slice two colon slice two now in this case we define two variables first by the var keyboard and second by the shorthand declaration save the project and execute the code first go to the project folder cd slices and run the project now we can see the output slice one go java c sharp pearl and slice two one two three four five six seven we could define a slices by two ways first var keyboard declaration and second shorthand declaration in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye
Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about create a slice using a slice literal. And in this session, we want to talk about the other slices concept. Create a slice using an array. As we already know that the slice is the reference of the array, so you can create a slice from the given array. For creating a slice from the given array, first you need to specify the lower and upper bound, which means a slice can take elements from the array starting from the lower bound to the upper bound. It does not include the elements above from the upper bound, as shown in the below. Syntax, new slice, column equals, array name, and square brackets, low, colon, high. This syntax will return a new slice. The default value of the lower bound is zero, and the default value of the upper bound is the total number of the elements present in the given array. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to create a slices from the array. First create an array, array, column equals, a square bracket, set 5 for the length and type int and initialize the value 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now we want to create some slices from the given array. First create a slice by the var keyword. Go to the next line for the example var slice 1 equals array square bracket one column two and create other slices by shorthand declaration for the example slice two column equals array square bracket zero column and in the next line a slice three column equals array a square bracket column two and in the next line a slice four column equals array a square brackets and set just column now display the created array and slices by the following code for the example fp array column set the variable array fp a slice one column and set the variable a slice one a slice two column a slice two and display a slice three sets the variable slice three and print a slice four column and set the variable slice four save the project now execute the code okay we can see the output First, we print the created array which contains the values 1 to 5. And then a slice 1 which stores the first index of the array and contains the value 2. Then a slice 2 which contains the index 0 to the end index of the array and hold the values 1 to 5. Now a slice 3 which contains the 0 index of the array to the second index and holds the value 1 and 2. And finally, the fourth slice that holds all the values of the array. And we could define the slices using array. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye.
Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about create a slice using an array. In this session, we want to talk about the other slices concepts. Create a slice using already existing slice. It is also be allowed to create a slice from the given slice. For creating a slice from the given slice, first you need to specify the lower and upper bound, which means a slice can take elements from the given slice starting from the lower bound to the upper bound. It does not include the elements above from the upper bound. Syntax new slice colon equals slice name and square bracket low column high. This syntax will return a new slice. The default value of the lower bound is zero and the default value of the upper bound is the total number of the elements present in the given slice. Now go to VS Code to illustrate how to create a slice from existing slice. First create a slice as a main slice. For the example main slice colon equals a square bracket and type int and initialize value 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. Now create other slices from the given slice. First by var keyword declaration. var slice 1 equals main slice square bracket and define lower and upper bound 1 colon 5 go to the next line and create other slices by shorthand declaration for the example slices 2 colon equals main slice square bracket 0 column and in the next line a slice 3 column equals main slice square brackets and column 6 and a slice 4 column equals main slice square brackets and just set column and for the example a slice 5 column equals main slice and set the lower and upper bound for the example 2 column 4 now display the slices by the following code first main slice fp main slice and set the variable main slice go to the next line and display the other slices fp slice 1 column set slice 1 and slice 2 column slice 2 and display the slice 3 slice 3 column slice 3 and display the slice 4 set the variable slice 4 and the end fp slice 5 column and sets the variable slice fine reformat the code save the project and execute the code now we can see the output first we print the main slice which contains the values from 10 to 70 and then a slice 1 which stores the first index of the main slice to the fifth index of the main slice and contains the values 20 to 50. Then the slice 2 which contains the index 0 to the end index of the main slice and hold the values 10 to 70. 
Now slice 3, which contains the zero index of the main slice to the six index of the main slice and holds the values 10 to 60. Now fourth slice that holds all the values of the main slice. And finally, a slice which stores the second index of the main slice to the fourth index of the main slice and contains the values 30 to 40. Okay, now we could define the slices using existing slice. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about create a slice using already existing slice. And in this session, we want to talk about the other slice concepts. Create a slice using make function. You can also create a slice using the make function, which is provided by the Go library. This function takes three parameters, type, length, and capacity. Here, capacity value is optional. It assigns an underlying array with a size that is equal to the given capacity and returns a slice, which refers to the underlying array. Generally, make function is used to create an empty slice. Here, empty slices are those slices that contain an empty array reference. You can see the syntax. When you use make function, one option you have is to specify the length of the slice. When you just specify the length, the capacity of the slice is the same. Now go to VS Code to illustrate how to create a slice using make function. First, create a slice by len4 and capacity7 by make function. For the example, var slice1 equals make function. First, set the type int and set the len4 and set the capacity 7. Now, display the slice1. ff a slice one equal percent v lowercase and backslash t length equal percent d comma backslash t and capacity equal percent d lowercase backslash n and sets the variable first slice one and then len of a slice one by the len function len slice one and then capacity of a slice one by the function cap and set the slice one And create a slice by just len7. Go to the next line and create another slice var slice2 equals make function type is int and length is 7. Go to the next line and display this variable ff slice equal percent v lowercase backslash t length equal to percent d lowercase comma backslash t and capacity equal to percent d backslash n and sets the variable slice 2 and length of the slice 2 by the function len slice 
2 and capacity of the slice 2 by the function cap and set the slice 2 reformat the code save the project and execute the code now we can see the output for the slice 1 length is 4 and capacity is 7 and for the slice 2 length is 7 and the capacity is 7 a slice is an abstraction over array it actually uses arrays as an underlying structure the len function returns the element present in the slice where cap function returns the capacity of the slice means how many elements it can be accommodate in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous sessions, we talked about declaration and initialization slices. And in this session, we want to talk about the other slices concept. Iterate over a slice. You can iterate over a slice using the following ways. First, using for loop. Second, using range info loop, third using the blank identifier info loop, and fourth using for loop as while. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use iterating over a slice. Okay, in this sample, we want to talk about iterate over a slice by using for loop. First creating a slice, this slice, colon equals, Square brackets type is int and initialize value by 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. Now we trade the slice using for loop. Do the following for i colon equals zero, i less than len of slice and i plus plus. We put the condition here for continue the for loop. So we use len function for set the condition and it means i less than 7. Now display the element of a slice in each increment. Write fp a slice a square brackets and set the index i. Reformat the code, save the projects and execute it. Now we can see the output and we could display elements of a slice from 10 to 70 by for loop. Now do another example. First clear the last code. In this case, we want to iterate over a slice using range in for loop. So do the following for index comma value colon equals range and a slice variable here is a slice and now display the index and value for each element of a slice ff index equals percent d and value equals percent d and backslash n and sets the variable index and value reformat the code save the project and execute the code okay we can see the output we could display indexes and values of a slice elements from 10 to 70 by using range in for loop now do another example first clear the last code 
In this sample, we want to iterate over a slice using a blank identifier in for loop. So do the following for underscore comma and value colon equals range in a slice variable. Now write the value ff the value equals person d and backslash n and sets the variable value we format the code and save and execute the code okay we can see the output we could display a slice elements from 10 to 70 by using range in for loop without an index now do another example First, clear the last code. In this sample, we want to iterate over a slice by using for loop as while. First, define a local variable as a counter. For the example, i colon equals zero as a counter and write for loop for range a slice and display the value of a slice for the example fp a slice a square brackets index i now increase the counter after each print and write i plus plus reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output and we could display a slice elements from 10 to 70 by using for loop as a while. In this session, we could iterate over a slice in several different ways. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about how to iterate over a slice. In this session, we want to talk about the other slice concept. Add items to a slice using append function. Go built-in package provides an append function that can be used to append to a slice at the end. Now you can see the syntax. The first argument of the append function is the slice itself. The second is the variable number of arguments which is element ellipsis type. Ellipsis operator is the variadic syntax. So basically, ellipsis type means that the append function can accept variable number of arguments of type type. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to add items to a slice using append function. First define a slice for the example a colon equals make function and set the type int and len is 2 and capacity is 5 go to the next line and initialize a slice a square brackets index 0 equals for the example 10 and in the next line a square bracket index 1 equals 20 now display the variable created fp a slice a and set the variable a and go to the next line and display length and capacity of variable a ff length percent d backslash t and capacity 
column percent b backslash n and set two function len and capacity is here len and set variable a and cap function for display the capacity of a variable now we can add items to a slice by using append function go to the next line a equals append function first variable is name of the variable and second variable is values and for the example set the value 30 comma 40 50 60 70 80 and 90 okay go to the next line and display the variable values again for the example fp a slice a after appending data and set the variable a and go to the next line and display length and capacity of variable a again ff length percent d backslash t and capacity colon percent d and backslash n and set to function len and cap len for a and cap function for set the capacity for variable a now reformat the code save the project and execute the code now we can see the output before we add new items slice a has two value 10 and 20 and length is 2 and capacity is 5 and after appending data slice elements are 10 to 90 and length is 9 and capacity is 10 if there is sufficient capacity in the underlying slice the element is placed after the last element and the length get incremented however if there is not sufficient capacity a new slice is created all of the existing elements are copied over the new element is added onto the end and the new slice is returned in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about add items to a slice using append function. In this session, we want to talk about the other slice concepts. Modifying a slice in Golang. As we already know that a slice reference type, it can refer an underlying array. So, if we change some elements in the slice, then the changes should also take place in the reference array. Or in other words, if you made any changes in the slice, then it will also reflect in the array. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to modify the slice. First, create an array. For the example, array column equals the square bracket and set six value for length type is int and initialize value 10 20 30 40 50 and 60. now create a slice from this array go to the next line and a slice colon equals array Square brackets, lower bound and upper bound. For the example 0, column 4. Now we print elements of array and slice before modifying. Go to the next line and fp first array set the variable array. Go to the next line fp first the slice 
and set the variable the slice save the project now we want to modify three elements of a slice do the following for the example a slice index 0 set the value 100 go to the next line a slice index 1 set the value 200 and go to the next line slice index 2 initialize value by the 300 now go to the next line and display elements of array and a slice after modifying fp backslash n second array and set array variable and go to the next line fp second slice and set variable slice reformat the code save the projects and execute the code now we can see the output first array values are 10 20 30 40 50 60 and first slice is 10 20 30 and 40. after modifying second array has the values 100, 200, 340, 50, 60. And the second slice has values 100, 200, 340. Now we change the elements of the slice and saw that the elements in the array also change. In order not to prolong the time of the session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about modifying a slice in Golang. In this session, we want to talk about the other slice concept. Sorting of a slice. In Go language, you are allowed to sort the elements present in the slice. The standard library of Go language provides a sort package which contains different types of sorting methods for sorting the slice of ints, float 64 and strings. This function always sort the elements available in the slice in ascending order. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to sort the elements present in the slice. First, creating two slice variables. For the example, slice one colon equals a square bracket and type is a string and initialize value for the example Perl Java Go C plus plus and ruby and in the next line create another slices slice two colon equals the square brackets and type of it is int and initialize values 30 20 50 90 10 40 80 60 and 70 first display a slices before sorting now do the following first print a message fp before sorting go to the next line and display two variables fp slice one and set the variable slice one and go to the next line fp a slice two and set the variable a slice two reformat the code and save the project now performing sort operation on the slice using sort function sort dot 
Because type of first slice is a string, we use a strings function. A strings and set the variable slice one. And go to the next line. Sort dot. Because type of second slice is integer, we use ints function. Ints and set the variable slice two. Save the project and go to the next line and display slices after sorting them. First, display a message FP after sorting. Go to the next line and display two variables FP slice one and go to the next line FP display slice. Two. and set the variable slice to reformat the code save the projects and execute the program now we can see the output before sorting we have a slice one by the values Perl, java go c plus plus and ruby and unsorted and a slice two 30 20 15 90 10 40 80 60 70 and it is unsorted too. After sorting, we have a slices one by values C plus plus go Java Perl Ruby and sorted, and a slice two have the values 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90, and the values are sorted. Okay, we printed the slices and see the values are unsorted. So used from a strings and ints function of sort package, and we could sort the slices. In order not to paralyze the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Good. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about sorting of slides. And in this session, we want to talk about the other slices concepts. Copy one slice items into another slice in Golang. The built-in copy function is used to copy data from one slice to another. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to copy one slice items into another slice. First, create a small slice and initialize it. For the example, a colon equals square brackets type is int and initialize value by 10, 20, and 30. Go to the next line and display this variable fp slice a and set the variable a. And go to the next line, display length and capacity of a variable. ff a slice a length is percent d and capacity colon percent d backslash n and display the length and capacity of variable a by two functions len and cap len a and cap a reformat the code and save the projects now create a bigger slice than upper slice we use from make function to create a slice b and don't initialize it for the example, b colon equals make function and type is int and length is 5 and capacity is 10. And don't assign any values to b variable. Now go to next line and use copy function for copy a slice a inside a slice b. Copy b comma a. Now go to the next line and display variable b after copy a slice a inside a slice b. fp a slice b e 
and go to the next line and display length and capacity of variable b ff slice b length column percent d and capacity column percent d and display the length and capacity of variable b by two functions len and cap len b and cap b reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output for slice a the values are 10 20 30 and length is 3 and capacity is 3 and then we define variable without initialize the value and copy a inside b and slice b have the values 10 20 30 and length is 5 and capacity is 10. now we could copy one slice items into another slice and go like in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about copy one slice items into another slice in Golang. In this session, we want to talk about the other slices concept. Append a slice to an existing slice in Go language. The usage of triple dot or ellipses used to append a slice. Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to append the slice to an existing slice in Golang. First create two slices. In this case, we define variables by the var keyword. var slice1 equals square brackets type is a string and assign values java C sharp and go go to the next line and define another variable var slice 2 equals square brackets type is a string and initialize value perl and php now append a slice 1 to a slice 2 by ellipses in append function a slice 2 equals append a slice 2 and a slice 1 by the ellipses now go to the next line and display two slices first fp slice 1 colon comma slice one and go to the next line fb slice two colon and set the variable slice two reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output slice one java c sharp go and slice two Perl, PHP, Java, C Sharp, Go. We could copy a slice to an existing slice by append function and triple dot. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about append a slice to an existing slice in Go language. And in this session, we want to talk about the other slices concept. Multidimensional slice. Multidimensional slices are just like the multidimensional array, except that a slice does not contain the size. 
Now go to VS Code program to illustrate how to implement multidimensional slides in Go language. First, create a multidimensional slice. For the example, slice 1, colon, equals, set two square brackets, first and second, and define type for the example int, and initialize the values. First, 10, comma, 20, and set the comma, end of the curly brackets, and go to the next line and define another values for the example 30, 40, and 50. Set the comma end of the curly brackets and go to the next line and initialize another values for the example 60, 70, 80, and 90 and set the comma end of the curly brackets and go to the next line and initialize the other values for the example a hundred and a hundred and twenty and set the comma end of the curly brackets now go to the next line and display the slice variable fp a slice and Slice. Reformat the code, save the project, and execute the code. Now we can see the output and we could define multidimensional slices. We have reached the end of this session. I hope you have taken full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye.